Thing. The City of Bo uh, Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for April 27th is now in session. This hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law and the executive order of Governor Baker suspending certain provisions thereof due to the ongoing public health crisis. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the WebEx event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices pages of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout, unless administratively muted, unmuted when asked to comment. As with our in-person meetings, comments in support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting will be limited by the chair as time constraints require. For that reason, the board pre prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project that is, those who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise your hand icon in the application via the WebEx event platform. To raise your hand, click the participant information icon. From there, find your name, and on the lower right hand side, you should see a hand raising icon. Click the icon and your hand will be ra virtually raised. Click it again and your hand should go down. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star three to raise your hand. Uh, just a reminder, if you're connected by telephone, please press star three to raise your hand. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time, and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Before we proceed, I'd like to take a roll call of board members. I'm Mr. Fortune. Good morning, man. Yeah. Good morning. Mark Ehrlich. Here. Acting um, chair, I mean, acting architect again. Mr. Ruggiero, Mr. Ruggiero. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Mr. Ligris. Is Mr. Ligris on? Ms. Dong? Uh, present. Okay, Mr. DeVoe. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Uh, checking one more time for Mr. Ligris. I don't see him on, Madam Chair. We'll reach out to him. Okay, um, and checking in to see about Mr. Hampton from the BPDA. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Mr. Fortune? Thank you, Madam Chair. The first uh, order of business is the approval of the hearing minutes of September 22nd, 2020, March 9th of 2021, and March 23rd of 2021. We need a motion. Proof. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. On the first case for extension, calling BOA 799-148-951 to 959A Dorchester Avenue. Madam Chair, this did ex well, will expire on May 11, 2021. And this, if the grant, this will be their second extension. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Um, Madam Chair, Ms. Secretary, members of the board, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Quilty and Miller, 28 State Street, on behalf of the applicant, 959.LLC. 
Um, and what's the reason for the, the request? This is the second extension? Correct. Um, the first extension was requested and granted just before the uh, current COVID-19 outbreak. At that point, uh, we were looking for more time to work with the Parks Department and finalize BPDA design review and financing. I can report that since this time, uh, despite the challenges of COVID-19, the client has secured financing. Uh, just in March, we got the BPDA um, okay for design review, and they are now producing the construction drawings that are required to get signature. And we've been asked to return to the Parks Department uh, for another hearing based on the revised plans and the final sign-off by the BPDA. May I have a motion, please? Yep. Uh, motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Following the next extension, calling VOA 803-394-246 to 248 Dorchester Avenue. Madam Chair, this is due to expire on May 11th of 2021. This would be their second extension if we grant it. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning again for the record, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ms. Secretary, Attorney Joe Hanley, McDermott, Fulte and Miller, 28 State Street uh, in Boston here on behalf of the applicant. And again, um, this is a second extension. Um, yes. Tell us what progress has been made since the last one. Yeah, so um, this the timing is near identical, but the project is obviously very different and impacted by COVID in the sense that it's a 159 room hotel project. Boston's hotel market has been uh, decimated more so than other parts of the country during the pandemic. We got an extension, it was put right into the record last year that was requested before the pandemic. At that point, um, we had a commitment for financing. We were working on design review with the BPDA. Uh, after that time, uh, financing for hotel projects has basically completely frozen. Uh, the client has still been working towards uh, its construction drawings, which are almost finalized. And we actually are getting good indications from financing now that the hotel market is starting to show some promise. Okay. So we'll play for a Thank more you. Time. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? For a motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 791-475-8 Dorset Street. Madam Chair, uh, this decision expired on September 28, 2020. This would be their first extension if we grant it. Name and address for the record, please. Second, he's on. Um, you've been unmuted, Garfield? Go ahead. Hi, um, this is Garfield Booth, 8 Dorset Street. I am the owner of the property. So this um, relief that we granted to you expired in September. Why are you here now in, um, in um, in April. Madam Chair, Kevin O'Connor, just a point of clarification. Although this uh, administratively, the expiration date was September 28th of 2020, the relief would be told by the acts of 2020. Yes, but I still need to ask the applicant why, why is he here so late? I have been in arbitration with the contractor that I um, gave the job to. And um, arbitration was over a year, a little over a year and a half to get through the process. Um, at the end of the process is when I work towards continuing the project. Um, so is the project then ready to go? Yes. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion for a one-year extension from the date of expiration. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling BOA 578-7665 Jackson Avenue. Madam Chair, this, this was a court case. Um, I don't have the exact dates, but uh, the Superior Court dated January 30th, 2020 with the decision. Uh, name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Charlie Kim. Uh, my wife, Carla Kim, is next to me, and we're at 5 Jackson Avenue. Um, so tell us, um, so the court case is settled. Are you ready to go with the project? 
Uh, yes, we. Um, it was July 26, 2016, when we had the original plans. So due to COVID, we had um, kind of delayed it from January 2020. And so we have to now go back to the plans and then go back out to bid to contractors um, to start this process again. Um, okay, you just, so, just so you know that, you know, we understand the COVID uh, situation. Um, however, we do want to make sure that these projects just the approvals just don't sit around. So just pay attention to your dates, please, so that we can uh, bring closure to this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you. May I have a motion, please? So is it is it a one, one year day. from today, Madam one Chair? Okay. Okay. Just a clarification, Madam Chair, before anybody makes a motion. So if the court date was 2020, wouldn't he technically have till 2022? Uh, he would, yes. So please, but what was the date? Was it January 22? 20, yeah, well, January 30th of 2020, that would give him two years from that date. If we give him a year extension, he only gets a one year extension, correct? No, it still brings him to 22. In fact, this is better for him because we're in 21 already. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so let's right. make so. it from a year from today, but please don't. Um, depend too much on our generosity okay in the future okay. yes ma'am let's get this done okay I'd like to make a, uh, ask for clarification for okay uh, so, so if the so the date of the extension would be one year from today is that correct ma'am exactly okay thank you so i'd like to make a motion for a one-year extension from today i'll second that motion second all those in favor aye aye, aye. all the uh, any opposed motion carries um, I just I just heard from uh, Mr. Legris. Is he on? Yes, Madam Chair. I, I missed the uh, first two, but I've been on since eight door set. My web accident okay. crashed. Okay, thank you. Calling the next um, two cases. Go ahead. I'm calling DOA 738 454 55 Chaucer Street. There is a companion case BOA 738 449 57 Chaucer Street. Madam Chair, this. We're about to be expired today, 427 2021. We grant this, it would be their second extension. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Moranti. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Madam Chair, members, this uh, matter, uh, um, which is a uh, companion case, was, as Mr. Fortune pointed out, extended by the board a year ago, essentially during the height of the pandemic. My client is just about ready to begin. Uh, in fact, he had National Grid uh, on site on April 15th to begin a conversion. Mr. Morenzi, yes. uh, Mr. Morenzi thank mm -hmm. you. As long as we know there's progress, may I have a motion, please? Uh, motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Well, the next case, calling BOA 889-396-59 West Walnut Park. This is ex this expired on 418 2021. This will be their first extension. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, uh, I be Irerwa, 59 West Walnut Park, Roxbury. So tell me, have you made progress towards getting this uh, construction done? Yes, we had, except that we ran out of money. That's why, but we, we got the funding that we needed now. We are ready okay. to go. May I have a motion, please? Motion for a one-year extension. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Call, calling the next case, calling DOA 904 1423 to 1425 Tremont Street. Madam Chair, the decision expired on March 1st, 2021. The applicant requested an extension on 2-18-2021. I guess it was an oversight. So name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, 10 Forbes Road in Braintree on behalf of the applicant. So Mr. Fulgini, has progress been made towards construction? As your honor, I mean, I'm sorry, it has, Madam Chair. Well, thank you, but. <laughs> <laughs> Old habits. Um, uh, it has, but the plans have been submitted. It's, this is a unique situation. Um, part of this development was a restaurant on the first floor during the pandemic, obviously. They didn't want to cause too much disruption because it, was, it turned from, uh, you know, sit down to totally take out. So. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? 
motion for a one-year extension. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. You're all set. Good luck. Thank you. Calling the next case for board final arbiter, calling BOA 943 624 118 to 120 Marcella Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joseph Feaster from the law firm of McKenzie and Associates, um, 183 State Street in Boston. Um, I um, just wanted to let you know I'm wearing my Anthony Pisani good luck bow tie this morning. Um, and I just want to let the board know exactly others on the team that may be present as well and may have to comment. The developer, Cameron Zahidi, Michelle Yin from his office, the architect, Stephen Chung, and my colleagues from the, uh, Timothy Frazier and Sadama Jones, another young woman that I'm training through this process. Uh, I am before you this morning because this is a Department of Neighborhood Development project. Um, and my client was uh, prepared before this board on December 9th, excuse me, July 9th, uh, 2019, and the variances were granted. At that time, they, this was a project for three family, um, and all of the parking is all the same as it exists now. But during the discussions with the Department of Neighborhood Development, it was uncovered that there was substantial environmental costs that were going to be incurred. So through the negotiations with the Department of Neighborhood Development, it was agreed uh, along with the Highland Park Association to increase the units to uh, four units on this particular site. Um, it was has been determined that there were no additional violations here uh, as well. So as I mentioned- So, was, so um, sorry, Mr. Fisa for the interruption, but can you mm -hmm. tell us what sub substantively it means to go from a three to a four? Does, does the size of the building change, does the height change, or does the, the unit um, size decrease? Uh, none of that were impacted, but I'm going to ask for a person who is, can be better explain that um, more accurately. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask for Stephen Chung to uh, unmute himself. He is the architect and he can speak to that issue. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Put your name and address on the record. Uh, my name is Stephen Chung, uh, architect. So my address is 38 Davlin Road, Whalen, Mass, 01778. So the, tell us, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. The building was uh, four stories. The bottom floor was uh, parking and some mechanical and, and part of a duplex for, uh, for the unit above. And basically we took the parking outside of that envelope, put it outside, and uh, now are using that formerly garage space as, uh, as a kind of one bedroom unit or ground floor unit. And how so the envelope, the envelope hasn't changed. The height has not changed. The the floor plan, the footprint has not changed. It's simply using that space that was dedicated for storage and parking. Um, now using it for a residential unit. And what's the size of that unit? Proposed unit? Uh, that unit is. I'm sorry, I have a. PDF yeah. right here. I have the sizes of all of the units, Madam Chair. I can state that the ground floor okay. unit is eight, 850 square feet. The first floor is per square feet. Second thousand two hundred and sixteen square feet, and the third floor is one thousand two hundred and seven square feet. Thank you. How are the plans, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ehrlich? Well, I, because it's a board of final arbiter, I actually hadn't seen the plans. I'm just looking at them right now. Uh, uh, Mr. Chung, it, it looks from this uh, elevation as if the grade is um, is below most of that. Most of that unit is, uh, basement unit is above grade. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That would be my, that would be my only issue. And based on the drawing that's in front of us, uh, I think the drawings are adequate. May I have a motion, please? Motion Madam Chair, before you have a motion on that, can I get, uh, just have one more comment? 
or you know, two more comments. One is this is going to be an energy plus home program for one. And the other thing, uh, would it be appropriate at this time, being that the this negotiations create with the Department of Native Development uh, has not permitted my client to begin anything with regards to the construction of this project. And as I mentioned, the hearing was on, they were before this board on July 9th, uh, 2019. Would it be appropriate for me to verbally make the request for an extension here, Madam Chair, or do I- I was, I was wondering if you'd go there. Um, let me just ask, Kevin, does this need to be advertised for the extension or can this be accomplished at the same time? Yeah, um, I mean, the notice that we would provide would be with respect to the open meeting law, and we haven't noticed it for that purpose under the open meeting law. So I, it might be appropriate for Mr. Feaster to request separately just to make sure that we are covered uh, from a notice perspective and we can get it on an upcoming agenda. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. So may I have a motion? <clears throat> to approve the change of use from a three to a four family. So moved. Um, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Feaster, we'll see you on another date for an extension. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Call the next board final arbiter, calling BOA 831064, 17 Madeline Street. Name and address for the record, please. Is Madeline Street on? Let me check. Um, Carson, are you here for Madeline Street? Mr. McGonagall on? Mr. McGonagall. Don't see, don't see the name. And okay, let's come back to this later. Let's move to the G card. Well, your next case, the G card. Helen VOA 117-2918-53 Marlboro Street. This is combining and renovating two buildings, 53 and 300, 53 Marlboro and 300 Berkeley to be known as 53 Marlboro Street. The violations article 32, section four, G card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. Well, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is David Linhart with Goulson and Stores at 400 Atlantic. Okay, so Mr. Mr. Linhart, can you yes. hold on a second? Um, uh, Christian, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair. Good morning, uh, members of the board. Christian Simonelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both the BWSC approval and no harm letters. Uh, Madam Chair, we also have the letter. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. David, that was probably the best, shortest presentation you've ever made, right? Some of my best work. <laughs> <laughs> calling, Appreciate calling it. your next case of building code, calling VOA 117-2851-33 Woodlawn Street. This is to erect a new three-story, three-family dwelling. There will be six vehicle parking garages located beneath the building. The parking garage will also be used by 31 Woodlawn Street. Construct new exterior decks and rear yard and building the violations of condition 780 CMR chapter seven, fire and smoke protection. 706.11 party walls, any wall located on the lot line between the adjacent buildings, which is used and adapted for joint service between two buildings shall be constructed as a firewall in accordance with section 706 point. Party walls shall be constructed without openings and shall create separate buildings. The eighth edition 780 CMR 101.4.7, MAAB 521 CMR 10.1 General, the public use and common use spaces of multiple dwellings in new construction consisting of three or more units shall comply with 521 CMR public and common use spaces of those spaces inside or outside a building that are used by residents and or visitors. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner, Peter Keene. Uh, Madam Chair, this uh, project was approved by the board uh, back at the end of 2018, I believe uh, early 2019. Uh, it involved the renovation of an existing two-family dwelling, uh, as well as the proposed construction of a new three-family dwelling. Uh, each of these lots are held in common ownership, uh, and the project was intended to, uh, be, to, to, to be managed as a single condominium association 
with a total of six units. I see the plan. Uh, Mr. Lins, Mr. Lins, let me just ask you, what, what were the provisos placed on this project? Was one of them no building code release? It was not. It was BPD design review only. We've, okay. conclu we've concluded BPD design review. Uh, the plans that are before the board uh, this morning uh, do include the BPD design review stamp. Uh, if I could ask the host to just move down to the elevation, I can show uh, sort of the front approach to the building so that we can understand uh, what what is involved here. And I, I understand. Mr. Mr. Butlick, have you seen these plans? Yes, I have. Do you have any concerns? Yeah, so uh, here's the situation, which is uh, this: there's a... Um, uh, it's identified as a, a building code violation because of the issue of the party walls. Uh, on the other hand, they have taken all of the various measures that are required in order to make it, uh, from my perspective, code com compliant. And I double checked with a real architect, so it wouldn't be just the acting architect uh, saying this, and we both agree. So it's sort of a uh, chicken and egg, because if it's now code compliant as a result of violating the code then they don't need building code relief so what we have done in the past with that and i that my inclination would be the same is to deny the building code relief and if and if it becomes still becomes an issue with the building department so they can go to the state board and and get relief there which i think is more appropriate may i have a motion to that effect can i be heard just briefly and no, I, I don't i mean this is this is here for building code relief and for no other purpose so may I have a motion, please? To a mo motion to deny building code relief. Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair, I'm going to try one more time to see if Mr. McGonagall is on before I go to the 930 cases. Madam Ambassador, anybody on for Madeline Street? I see a hand raise. Let me just um, call it 22. Yeah. Are you here from Madeline Street? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Okay, let me, let me call it into the record, sir, and we'll go from there. Case BOA, this is Board Final Arbiter, Case BOA 831064, Madeline Street. Name and address for the record, please. Stephen Tolman, 17 Madeline Street. Um, so you're here requesting a uh, board final operator. Can you explain why you need our, 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 role, our role in this? Yes, well, essentially, we had the project which we were putting a bathroom off the back with a bedroom. And we realized that as we're getting older, my wife and I, we wanted to go from 14 feet to 16 feet, make it a little bit wider, so it would be a little bit more comfortable. And then when we decided that, we figured that if we just raised the roof in, in, in one of the bedrooms to the proper eight-foot level, it would give much better circulation, and, and it just seemed to make a lot of sense. Okay, and hold it, on. It, hold on. Uh, Mr. Olick, have you seen the plans? Um, no, 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 BFA, I have not, but I'm looking at, um, if you could scroll down uh, on the plans that are on the screen now. Okay, keep, can you keep going? I mean, it looks like this is a de minimis change. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call the 930 hearings. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 930? If you could please give me the address first. 168 Gove. For the record calling, for the record calling, BOA 116 168 Gove. Name. Go Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Richard Lins, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf, behalf of the petitioner. Uh, Madam Chair, we have some additional changes to make with respect to this project. We do need to file updated plans with ISD, uh, and as a result, we would require a deferral of this matter. May I have a motion, please? A motion, a motion for, for Is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The date, please. We have a date of June 22nd at 12.30, I believe. Okay. Um, I'm Mr. Lenz and everybody else who's here asking for deferrals. We are um, feeling like we've given everybody enough time given the pandemic and, and, and the workarounds we've had to do that we are ready to go ahead with a full agenda um, and we are loath to go through with too many deferrals. Understood, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. That will be at 12.30, I'm sorry. Are there any other deferrals and withdrawals for 9.30 only? Hearing none, I'll call the first case. Calling DOA 116 6809 6 8 St. Andrew Road. This is a renovation of the existing rear deck, extending deck to the upper floor, in addition, in addition of an egress stair and extension of the first floor portion of the deck. The renovation of the rear basement access stair, the violation of Article 27T. This is in the East Boston I part. Article 53, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient, and Article 53, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. So, Madam Madam Chair, this is this is my next door neighbor. I, I live next door to the property, so I'm going to recuse myself from this. Oh, well, that's Joe. Okay. Okay, please put your name and address on the record. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Matt Eckel with Drago and Toscano with a business address of 11 Beacon Street. As mentioned, we're seeking to erect a rear stairwell, a third story, a third floor rear deck, and extend the existing first floor deck around the side, as you can see on the plans there on the right side. Uh, the side deck addition is approximately 12 feet by 20 feet. Uh, there is parking that is uh, accessed on an existing driveway, but that will not be affected by this proposal. The driveway ends before the deck that we're proposing to extend uh, would meet. In terms of violations that were mentioned, we do have a side yard violation. Required is seven. Uh, with this proposal, we would go from 15 to about 6.2, so just slightly under what's required. Rear yard, you're required 35 with the shallow lot exception. Uh, currently, we have 15 feet. This proposal would bring us to 11.9, so a slight change there as well. And we were cited for uh, iPod applicability. So uh, there is no occupancy in the basement? That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay. It's how, are the how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? The plans are adequate. Anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We will go, we would like to go on the record in support for this proposal. During the community process, this proposal received strong support from Abaris and from Orient Heights Neighborhood Council. Thank you so much. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Perfoli, Boston. City Council in East West Abbey George's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, the BPDA recommends design review. Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, design review is fine. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling VOA 115 3771 78 Tyler Street. This is a change of art from a convent to eight apartments. Add an addition in the rear to the third and fourth floor levels. The solar panels on the roof. The violations Article 43, Section 23, off street parking. And Article 32, Section 4, this is in the G card applicability. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Nancy Lowe. I'm 32 Cedarwood Road, Jamaica Plain representing the Chinese Economic Development Council located at 65 Harrison Avenue. Um, the Chinese Economic Development Council, CEDC, is a nonprofit organization that so has- So, Ms. Lowe, can you kind of go to the, get to the point directly? So, okay. this is to convert a convent to eight apartments with the addition of uh, third and fourth floor levels. Tell us about the, the number, the bedroom count um the average size per, 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 per category you all need relief for parking so tell us about the parking situation 
So, so um, apparently there is no off street parking in Chinatown um, for any buildings. It's all uh, residential parking in that area. Um, for each uh, apart for each floor, there'll be one one bedroom apartment and um, two. There'll be a, a one two bedroom apartment for each floor. And what's the average sizes of the one bedrooms? I believe the one bedrooms will be uh, around 600 square feet and the two bedrooms will be about 800 square feet. Okay. Um, Christian, would you like to go on the record? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Christian Seminelli, Boston Groundwater Trust, and we have both the BWSC approval and the no harm letter. Madam Chair, we have the letter as well. Thank you. How are the plans, Mr. Olick? Plans are adequate. Any, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes. yes. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lisa High with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held an abutters meeting on March 2nd, 2021. The Mayor's Office would like to go on record to support. The neighborhood is in support of creating more affordable housing for the Chinatown community. And they have support from the Chinatown South Cove Neighborhood Council, as well as other organizations and associations, such as the Greater Boston Chinese Golden Age Center and the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association of New England, which these are all um, have been sent to the board as well. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Flink's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and civic associations who indicated no concerns regarding the use of the unit. Neighbors did, however, highlight concerns regarding affordability, so we ask the proponent to continue to work closely with the community on that issue as well. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Council Wasabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have a few letters of support. I'm sorry, three letters of support? We have a few letters of support. Yes. A few, okay. I believe I submitted 14 hold letters. On, hold on. No. Um, okay, we have this information. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, I think the BPDA again calls for design review. <laughs> I think they're getting fussy. There's uh, repointing and window replacement, but if they want it, they can have it. But I they have a rear addition too, Mr. Ehrlich. They have rear additions on the oh, third. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll so the BPDA design review. Is all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Calling the next case, calling COA 113 30 Chestnut Street. This is a renovated three family to demolish and renovate kitchens and bathrooms. A new roof deck, repair garage, and replace the garage roof. Violation of section one, the Floyd A ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. I mean, good, afternoon. Oh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, 10 Forbes Road, Braintree. Uh, Mr. Fulgini, can you speak closer to your mic because I'm having difficulty hearing you? I apologize. Is that better, Madam Chair? Yes. Not really. <laughs> okay, closer, I guess. <laughs> I'll be like on top of the screen. Okay, but that, if that's what it takes, we need to hear you. Try this volume. Um, Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I'm here on 30 Chestnut Street. With me today is Dave Breed, who's the team architect, together with Ty Gupta, who is the owner developer. The proposal is to extend the fifth floor penthouse two feet on either side to bring the building flush with the uh, party's wall and the adjacent buildings. The zoning subdistrict is H265. The zone is a three family apartment, and the lot area is 2,233 square feet. Um, additionally, as part of this proposal, we are reducing the occupancy from its current uses of three family to a two family. The only violation is a minor increase in FAR because we're adding uh, only 77 square feet of additional FAR. The unit sizes, unit one. So tell us what's required and what what's what uh, this this 77 square feet will bring you up to. Sure. So um, looks as though. Right, uh, you, this is the, the whole neighborhood is uh, zoned as a 2FAR. 
the existing FAR on this building is a 262, and with this 77 foot change, it would just be a 2.65. Okay. Uh, and there's no occupancy in the basement, or is there? There is not. Um, and, um, okay, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, the plans are good, actually. The, uh, the current existing loft is kind of odd-looking on, on uh, a house like this, and what they've done by extending it and adding windows and a railing is they've made it look more in keeping with the rest of the... Um, uh, uh, the buildings, uh, that building and the other structure. So the, the plans are fine. Uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, uh, Kennedy Avery with Councillor Box Office. I had comments to add, um, noting the opposition of the Beacon Hill Civic Association. Councillor Bach would like to go on record of opposition for this applicant's proposal to expand the fifth floor loft. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, here we have uh, letters of uh, opposition. And Madam Chair, I do have three raised hands whenever you're ready. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, Joshua you, uh, Grossman, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. My name is Josh Grossman. Uh, I'm an attorney at Davis Mullen and D'Augustine at One Boston Place in Boston. I represent Linda Schubert Bodman of 24 Chestnut Street. She is three doors down um, from, from Third Chestnut. Uh, so but I, I'm assuming this is opposition. What's the opposition based on? The opposition yeah. relates to the fact that the fifth, this, they're looking to expand the fifth floor roof house. It's been demolished. It's, it is gone. And there's a disagreement about the original size and dimensions of that roof house. Fundamentally, they want to expand this, this fifth floor structure, but they, they tore it down. And, but uh, let me just ask you a question. If you get beyond the fact that, you know, there's a dispute on, on, on what was there, is there opposition to the concept of this 77 square foot addition on the fifth floor? The uh, short answer is, is yes, potentially. And we have, we have questions. Let me just say this. There is a prior set of plans, which I have submitted uh, to ZBA by email, that was prepared by uh, two associates for this project that lists the relevant existing dimensions for the length of uh, the north and south walls of this upper uh, uh, floor that is now gone as 17 and a half feet, whereas the permit set lists it at 21 and a half feet. That is a four foot linear difference. And the the permit set says verify in field. Okay, so so okay, so I so I understand. Anybody else to speak either in support or in opposition? Hi, Laura, you've been uh, oh go ahead. Is Sorry, go ahead? Madam Chair. Board Shanice Pontel with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, this proposal did complete oh, a full okay. okay. However, um, but others did have concerns and the Beacon Hill Civic Association did vote um, adamantly in opposition of this proposal. So at this time, we cannot support this proposal. Thank you. Okay, okay and Laura, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Hi, my name is Laura Bashaw. Um, I'm with Thornton Tomasetti at 27 Wormwood Street. I'm representing John Blasberg. I'm a um, civil engineer. Um, John Blasberg is at 28 Chestnut Street, uh, direct abutter and shares a party wall with this um, proposal. Uh, we are in opposition to this proposal, um, pending some um, questions. The new penthouse is going to increase the loads on the party wall. We request, um, since this is potentially a substantial load change, um, that calculation packages are submitted um, okay, so let me just ask, uh, beyond the, the, um, the loads, which, which is substantial, which is, which is a, a totally important issue, um, 
is there a conceptual opposition to the addition of 77 square feet? Um, I will let John, um, who is on here, um, on the line as well, speak to that as the home adjacent homeowner. And Ms. Mr. Blasberg, please keep it short, Ms. Ambassador. I'd like to hear from one more person after we are done with Ms. Mr. Blasberg. Okay. Okay, John, you, uh, John, you've been unmuted. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, please. Go ahead. Great. John, John Blasberg, 28. I'm the owner and resident of 28 Chestnut. The, my opposition is that it, it creates integrity risk for my property by increasing the loads, by creating a so wall. I, that, I just, that, I just want to, my question to you is, beyond the load issue, do you have conceptual issues or concern about the addition of 77 square feet? I'm not sure what you mean by conceptual issues. I've got issues that relate to the, there's more than just the load. There's there's the potential for ice dams and snow okay. loads as okay. well as. Thank as, you, thank you, uh, Ms. Ms. Ambassador. May I have one more person? Sure, Sandy. Um, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes, Sandy Steele, and I'm at 60 West Cedar Street. I'm a member of the Zoning and Licensing Board, which firmly voted against an expansion. And I can assure the proponent that we would vote against a total replacement of. Uh, I believe it's important that we keep our zoning in, in C2. And I believe that the only motivation for this person is money. And that is not acceptable. OK, OK, thank you. Um, OK, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Well, I guess I'm going to make, I mean, even though I uh, have. So, so the BPDA, BPDA recommends approval um, with, uh, of course, the proviso for the um, the architectural commission. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm aware that this, this would go before the, the uh, Beacon Hill Architectural Commission. But given that there's, uh, other than the proponent, that there's no support for this, it's a little hard, even though from a design perspective, it actually looks better. Um, I think, but but I guess the existing drawings don't reflect what is in fact existing if it's been torn down. So I would make a motion to deny without prejudice um, and sounds like they have some homework to do. Is there I, a second? I will second denial without prejudice. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 115-3925-639 East 6th Street. This is to add an addition to the right rear of the building. The violation of Article 68, Section 8, side yard is insufficient. May I add just for the record, please? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. We are Ben and Jennifer Miller, owners of 639 East 6th Street, and this is our builder, Steve Turpin. We are taking a from the board for its side yard to give us a slightly bigger kitchen and the ability to have a closet in the upstairs bedroom. I'll be, Bill or Steve will, can give you uh, more. Okay, support. let me just ask you, is this a one family or what? how many units in this building? Single family. It's a single family. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, well, there's a problem in that uh, it, it lists as, uh, a six, eight ceiling and it has to be seven feet in the basement. Okay, so this is, is this seven, is, uh, wait, the, um, so let me see. You are looking for um, this. Um, so you're looking for an addition to the right rear of the building. Can you tell us how we are going to meet the ceiling re requirement? In the basement mode, Jeff? Yes. It is a drop ceiling in the basement currently, and I believe the ceiling uh, percentage wise does re meet, uh, meet requirements. Okay. Um, wait, wait say, say that again. That doesn't make any sense. It, it says on the drawings that it's six foot eight. It's, it's six foot eight. It's a drop ceiling currently. We plan on removing the drop ceiling, and then there are mechanicals there that will be uh, relocated. But I believe more than 50% of the ceiling in the basement is at seven feet. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record and support. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Calderon from Councilor Flink's office. 
the council would like to on record and support as there has been no issues reported from either the neighbors and city point neighborhood association regarding this proposal councillor Flynn's support stems from this project remaining a single family as it would help a family remain in south boston and to help contribute to our community thank you good morning madam gm members of the board karen foley councillor anise wasabi george's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Ma Madam Chair, I have no additional raises. Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of opposition. I mean, this seems like a de minimis project. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with the provider, the provider that no building code relief be given. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, everybody. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1160163, 25 Doris Street. This is a new two family violations, Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot size. Article 65, Section 9, insufficient lot size per unit. Article 65, Section 9, in, oh, that, I'm sorry. sorry. Clean porches removed from the plan. Okay, is, is that violation taken out? So there's only two violations. That's correct, Mr. Fortune. Thank you. Sorry about that. Name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. Uh, and for clarification, uh, the in initially cited violation for front yard setback has been uh, uh, removed, the, uh, uh, the, the proposed front uh, porches uh, which created that violation have been removed which is reflected on the set of plans before the board today this is an application for a new two-family dwelling located at 25 Doris Street which is a 3FD 3000 zoning district uh, the uh, uh, violations are attributable to the fact that the minimum lot size in the sub zoning sub district is 3000 square feet the lot in question is 2210 square feet uh, Madam Chair, members, uh, this lot is a part of a subdivision of eight lots where uh, six of the lots are in fact uh, 34 feet by 65 feet, which are the dimensions of this lot. One is 65 feet by 31 feet wide. The other one is 31 feet wide by about 55 feet deep. So this so is Mr. entirely Rancy, consistent. Mr. Rancy, a couple of questions. When was the subdiv When did the subdivision occur? Uh, this this has been a standalone lot since it, uh, the early 20th century, so it, it, okay. it has nothing to do with this okay. project uh, because there okay. was an application from um, 1913 or something to build okay. these. Okay, I just garages. wanted to this know that it wasn't a recent subdivision. Yep. No, it's a good point. It, yeah, the subdivision wasn't created for the project. So okay. uh, the only violation is, in fact, the lot size. As I said, the lot size is typical of the neighborhood. There are two units uh, its ground floor is a two-car garage uh, access is by means of an existing curb cut on dorset street dorset i'm sorry uh, doris street doris street is a one-way leading uh, down past the property onto dorchester avenue there's also a hydrant uh, next to the uh, uh, the exit from the garage which means that there's no parking uh, you know for maybe 15 feet to the left of the garage which would assist with any vehicles getting out but there's plenty of maneuverability room so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Morenci, question. This isn't a 3FD, which which basically thinks that this should be uh, have the look of a triple decker. Tell us about what the street looks like and how this is going to be contextual. Did we lose Mr. Morenci? Madam Chair, with the exception of right across the street from 25 Doris, it's all triple deckers. It's all, it all, it's all has a triple decker look to yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Morenci, are you back? It looks like he's still on, but I know that the, the owner is here as well. Um, Nancy, Hi, Nancy, did you have anything to add? I, we're not sure what's happening with George Morancy. No. Yeah, I'm not, not sure what happened here.
George, can you hear us? I am sorry, uh, this is George Morancy, I'm back. Uh, we had a, a power surge or something, I'm sorry, and I became disconnected. Uh, can everyone hear me now? Yes, yeah, so the question is that, you know, this, this zoning 3FD um, suggests that the, the the look of the street is a, is a triple decker, which was confirmed uh, by a, a Google look. So can you tell us how this conforms with that, uh, the building form? Well, it, it, it is a, a three-decker. It's a, it's a, it's a, an unattached uh, three-story, three-family dwelling. Uh, my clients uh, initially attended to uh, replicate the look of other of the three-deckers on the street by having the front porches, which is a prevalent uh, uh, design um, uh, aspect of, of other buildings, but that created a front yard uh, setback violation, and they wanted to minimize the violations. But uh, it is consistent with uh, 3FD uh, zoning, except for the fact that it's a two-family rather than a three-family. As I said, the violation is well, tell uh, us the insufficient. Tell us about the garage, please. Uh, the, the garage is for two vehicles. Access would be provided. I'm sorry, I didn't know when I was cut off because I, I, I guess I was speaking and nobody could. I, I was disconnected. Uh, the garage uh, is a two-car garage with maneuverability room in the front. It's accessed by a, an existing uh, curb cut uh, on, on Doris Street. Okay. Um, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, the plans are uh, okay, other than the fact that uh, your favorite bugaboo is awfully big garage door. Yeah, it's uh, worth uh, speaking about, uh, Mr. Ehrlich, and uh, I, I became involved in this project after the plans had been developed, and it's something that I flagged with my clients uh, at the time. And I pointed out that uh, were the board to entertain approving this, uh, that uh, during design review that the garage door would need to be uh, reduced in width and, and, and redesigned. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also, uh, I can't tell from the plans, what is the, the, it's an existing curb cut, correct? What is the width? That is correct. Uh, from uh, the uh, Google Street View, it appears to be, uh, I mean, it's 10 feet, it might be a bit wider, it might be 11 feet, uh, okay. but uh, okay. it's, it's an ancient curb cut, but uh, obviously uh, can make sure that it's fully in conformance with current BTD guidelines. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here? So, uh, yeah, I, 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 Go I, ahead. Just, I, got, I got a question. So, it, in order, so the only reason why we, they, they got rid of the front decks was to remove the violation because it seems like the front porches go in context with the neighborhood. Correct. Right. Uh, and my clients were attempting to minimize the violations because I think as the board will hear, uh, there is uh, there is some opposition from, uh, from uh, uh, neighbors and uh, some of it is based upon privacy concerns. And my clients eliminated those front porches in, res in response to some of the concerns that were expressed. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office and Neighborhood Services. There was an abutters meeting held on March 29th of this year to discuss this proposal. The applicant has also conducted outreach to the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association. Based on feedback from abutters, the plans have been updated to reflect a reduction in unit count from four to two units with off street parking and increased open space uh, and the removal of the front decks to increase privacy concerns. Um, there are multiple letters of support and opposition from direct abutters and stakeholders on file with the board currently. Um, we would like to go on record in support of this proposal, but ask that if approved, continued BPDDA, BPDA design review be completed and that the applicant continue to outreach to direct abutters. Thank you. morning madam chair members of the board this is julie ryan from city council frank baker's office we would also like to go on record in support of this project and ask that the um the proponents still reach out to the abutters like patrick had said thank you good morning madam chair members of the board karen foley Councilor sabi georgie's office would like to echo the sentiments of the mayor's office and Councilor baker and support this project thank you Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, the council to go on record and support. Madam Chair, Madam. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support and letters of opposition. 
Thank you. I'm sure I have three raised Ms. hands. Ms. Ambassador, may I hear of the two people who are on the phone and one other person, please? Sure. Um, Sandra, you've been unmuted. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Sandra Correa. My family and I have lived at 1087 for about 28 years, owner-occupied. Um, the neighbors do not support this project. We've submitted over 50 signatures from uh, people within five, 150 square feet of the project. Our back deck is our only open space, and this building will take away the use of that. Um, we went to the association meeting a vote was not taken by the association. So let me just this. ask you, um, this is an undersized lot. Um, yeah, yeah. It is, it's been around, you know, for a hundred years. Um, so somebody does have a right to build on, on a vacant lot unless uh, the neighborhood buys the lot and does what it, what it wants with this, but this isn't private ownership. It looks like the, um, the violations are minimal and, and I'm looking at the information that is before me and um, uh, it only the only violation is that in fact it's the lot size is insufficient and the lot size for the additional dwelling unit is insufficient but there's no side yard there's no rear yard and there's no front yard violation so I guess I need to ask you, are you in concept opposed to a two family dwelling on this lot? Uh, yes, um, the applicant was before the board eight months ago. Um, the lot size hasn't changed obviously and the concerns that we have has not changed. The so building the, is- the lot, ha the, the lot size could not change, it's, it's, it's a given. Um, so I guess the question is, the decision is from the development from the developer is if it's a one family dwelling or a two family dwelling, because the violations are pretty much uh, going to be the same. So well, that's, that's the reason I ask if, you know, I, I need to understand, is it conceptually that there's opposition to the one, fa to the two family proposal or not? The, the, there's opposition not only because of how it affects us as a, a direct abutters, but the parking situation on the street is just um, out of control. We are a very short street. There's only five units on the side of Doris. The uh, uh, applicant owns the building um, and abuts his own lot, and he has tenants that use that space for parking. That is the only use that space has ever had. The garage is there and it accommodates his building. Thank you. Thank you. I, I understand now. Anybody uh, uh, else, uh, Ms. Ambassador? No, yep, Yvonne. Um, Benson, you've been unmuted. Can you say your name and address, you. please? My name is Yvonne Benson. I live at 6 Treadway Road. I am an abutter. Okay. I would be okay with a one unit building being built there, but it's too small to have a two unit building. Okay, thank you. Um, any uh, one more person, please? Okay, um, Liam Connolly. Uh, hi, Liam Connolly, uh, 27 Dora Street. I just want to say my whole thing with this is, is um, you know, they're good landlords. They've been great to everyone. Um, my thing is, if they want to build a two family, I think it's better than having a corporation come along later down the road and try and build a three family with no parking. Um, you know, that's going to be able to muster their way a little bit more than... So, Mr. Nice Mr. Keneally, you're, you're in support of this? Yes, I am, ma'am, because okay. I think that... Um, I... Okay, thank you. Come in. Okay, so given that information, um, Mr. Marenzi, so I guess the bottom line is that um, the concern is that this lot has been used for parking for an abutting lot, um, and there's concern about displacement of those vehicles on the street? Uh, uh, not, a, yeah, not, a, not officially, Madam Chair. My client uh, uh, actually uses uh, this lot. He has a construction business uh, on the Google Street View. You can see the sign on the garages. He store, used, the, used the garages for storage of construction material uh, and, and, uh, and the such. Um, and as you can see, I mean, much of this lot is, is paved over. I mean, sorry, it's not paved. It's, it's grass. It's, it's not set up for parking. Uh, vehicles are occasionally in and out. In terms of the, the density, I would point out that of the uh, uh, adjacent uh, buildings and other buildings in the area from 20, 
23 Treadway, 21 Treadway, everything else on this side of Doris Street, and then including 1087 and 1085 Dorchester Avenue, those are all three family dwellings. Um, okay. So this is okay. an undersized lot. It's the same size as those lots, but only two units are being proposed. Thank you. So given that information, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I guess I'll make a motion to approve with BPDA design review, uh, with particular emphasis on reducing the garage door size. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Following the next case, Kong DOA 1134705, 37 Whale Street. This is demolition of an existing building, constructing new multifamily building, construction of a five story low income permanent housing building with 28,760 gross square feet. The violation of Article 60, Section 40, Off Street Parking Loading Requirement. Article 60, Section 8, the MFR is forbidden. Article 60, Section 9, the additional lot area per unit. Article 60, Section 9, excessive FAR. Article 60, Section 9, the number of allowed stories has been exceeded. Article 60, Section 9, the maximum of allowed height has been exceeded. Article 60, Section 9, insufficient usable open space per unit. And Article 60, Section 9, insufficient rear yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Eliza Data. I'm an affordable housing developer. My company is E3 Development and address is 40 Homer Street, Newton, Mass. I am partnering with Heading Home, the applicant for the 37 Whale Street project. Heading Home is a Boston-based nonprofit that provides housing and services to homeless individuals and families. I'm here today with Danielle Ferry, our CEO of Heading Home, and representatives of Studio G Architects and DLA Piper. The project before you today would redevelop the property at 37 Whale Street, which Heading Home acquired in 2011 but is no longer occupiable due to structural issues with the existing apartment building and the site retaining walls. So let me just ask you, was the existing building used and permitted as a permanent housing? And how many units was there, were there in the, in, the, in the current building? There are 10 units in the existing apartment building. Okay, so this is a proposal to go up to 23 units. Um, may I just have a quick breakdown? There's 19 two bedrooms, four three bedrooms, and one management office. Um, tell us about the average sizes of the two beds and the three beds. Yeah, so I'm going to ask um, Rachel there from Studio G to comment on that. The two bedroom units uh, are around 750 square feet. The corner units are closer to 770 square feet. And the three bedroom units are around 1,070 square feet. Okay, and this is for permanent permanent housing then? It's not uh, temporary on the way to permanent then? Yeah, that's correct. It's permanent supportive housing for families transitioning out of homelessness and it's housing plus services. The on-site office is for a full-time support service staff person. And is that 24-7? Uh, no, it's 40 hours a week, but there is 24-7 property management service. Okay, um, and um, what is the zoning district for this parcel? Here. Rachel, can you get that one? So 3F5000, sure. Madam Chair. I'm sorry? A 3F5000. Okay, okay, um, and um, tell us about the, let's see, the FAR, the excessive open space can you tell us about the off-street parking and loading are you providing any any parking and loading we're providing a uh, one off-street parking space the parking space is for staff to manage and maintain the building so is there an anticipation that your residents may not have off-hour jobs and need additional parking So, Danielle, yeah, if I could wait, if I could weigh in, Danielle Ferrier, heading home. Um, 
uh, Madam Chair and Board, our, our folks are extremely low income. It is a permanent supportive housing residence, which is what it has been um, under our ownership the entire time. So a large uh, portion of our folks are disabled in a variety of, of disabilities, and some work and some do not. Um, most do not have cars, and so parking is not as, as relevant an issue for this population. Excellent. Thank you. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Um, the drawings are, are fine. Um, it's a pretty big expansion of an existing. What, what is the, will the height of this proposal be the same? I'm looking at Google Maps. Will the height of this be the same as the building to the right or different? Our building will be approximately nine feet taller than the abutter directly to the right. Okay, because when you look at the rest of the street, it's really, it's much smaller. Those will be the only, the only two very large buildings. The rest of it is smaller, one and two and three family. Mr. Olick, is this mid block or is it corner towards the corner of the block? Uh, mid block. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Dante Peoples from the Office of Neighborhood Services, and we would like to go on record in support of this proposal. This applicant went through the BPDA's Article 80 process where it was approved by the BP, BPDA's board on January 14, 2021. We believe this will bring much needed low income permanent housing to the community. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Michael Sinatra, Senior Project Manager at the BPDA. We want to continue to reiterate our strong support for this project and the mission of heading home to um, provide much needed transitional housing to the neighborhood. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Destin Gardner, behalf of City Councilor Andrea Campbell's office. We would also like to go on record in support um, with the acknowledgement that the development team um, and heading home will continue to work with the direct abutters who raised some, some concerns. Um, they've already started engage. They've been engaging them through the whole process, and they plan to continue to engage them. So, uh, we just hope they will continue to do that. I'm chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record support. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have letters of support. Madam Chair, we have five raised hands. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is Karen Foley, Council of Sabi George's office. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, can we hear from um, three of the five at random, please? Hi, Jan, you've been unmuted. Just state your name and address, please. Okay. Hi, Fatima, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Fatima Al Islam, 34 Burma Street, Mattapan. As chair for the Greater Mattapan Neighborhood Council, I'm speaking. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. There was some disturbance, but go ahead. Okay. I'm speaking today in support of the project with the proviso that the developer continue to work with the nearby abutters. There were significant issues from the retaining wall that have caused flooding in nearby abutters' homes, uh, in addition to parking issues. Thank you. Um, yep, Brianna, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Good morning. My name is Rihanna Bernal, project manager with the Boston Department of Neighborhood Development at 12 Channel Street. Yeah, and thanks. I'd, I'd like to hear from a community person, please, because we did hear from the BPDA. May I, may I hear from a community person? Lewis Dodson, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Good morning. Lewis Dodson, 45 Wales Street, Director Butter. I am opposition to the proposal. There is currently no par parking on Wales Street. Both sides are being used for parking. The, par the, the housing that was there, it was 10 units. The parking lot was continually full. Every occupant had a had an automobile. So to say that you're going to go from 10 to 23 and there's not going to be an increase when you had parking before and it was a problem. If you check the police records, the time that they've been ownership, there have been over 100 complaints, motor vehicle complaints on that property. So to, so to insist that you're going to go from 10 units 
to 23 and there's not going to be an impact in parking with no off-street parking, one person there 40 hours in one spot for that person is ridiculous and ludicrous. The entire community is against it. All the abutters are against it. They're trying to shove this down our throat. From 10 to 23 on that little, little lot is crazy. The, the, the two, there's already four buildings, apartment buildings on the street. There is no parking as it is. You're going to go from 10 to 23 with no parking and try to tell us that the residents aren't going to have um, cars? Check the records. Check the police records. Check Boston Transportation. So, so let me it's, just it's, ask it's, you, let me ask you, sir. Um, so uh, your 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 observation is that um, that when there were ten units on the site, that a lot of the that the par parking lot was full and it was filled by the residents of those units. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm an adjacent abutter. There were ten units. Only one woman in that apartment did not have a car. One. Everyone okay. else. Thank you. It was con okay. the parking lot was constantly full. They had. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Anybody else to speak? From the community? Hi, Rudy. You've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Oh, quick. Rudy, Abbott Street. I'm actually, uh, my property is actually the property that's separate from the garage into the backyard of that property um, and alongside with um, uh, Dijon Redrick at 28. Um, his garage took damage from the water damage that's actually come down from, from that property and also my garage as well too. Um, it has been an issue. I've been there over 30 years. I'm all my life with my family. Um, that parking lot and the family, it, as the, it, it's just been ridiculously always full with cars. Tenants always have vehicles there. So it, it's also, it's been a concern to me why they went from 10 units to 23 units. It, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. There will be no playground for the, for the, for the kids. It will be no parking for the tenants. I'm on Abbott Street and I get a load of, um, resident from Well Street that's actually coming over on my side to park. So now it would be okay. even worse. So thank you. Thank you. So let me ask the applicant. Uh, it sounds like this is an issue that has, there's two issues that have not been resolved. One is the fact that there is, it sounds like there's no opposition to the type of housing um, which is excellent, but it does sound that there is an issue with the density of the units and the lack of parking. Uh, can you please talk that through? Sure. sure. So um, with regard to the, the size of the project, the, the 23 units allows Heading Home to get to a scale and, and a level of efficiencies that works from a financing per perspective and from the support service perspective and will promote kind of the ongoing sustainability of operations with the project. So that's very important to the organization. Uh, with regard to parking, um, the existing building does have surface parking behind the building. Um, our structural engineer has advised us that that is part of the issue that has contributed to the, the failure of the retaining wall at the back of the site. Um, and so we, we explored other potential options for parking, but they were too costly given that this is deeply affordable housing. Okay, um, you know, the, the, the role that we have to play is um, understanding the, the, the requirements that heading home as one of the applicants we will see today with that of the community. Um, may I have a motion for deferral? Because obviously there is there are issues that should be addressed uh, because the I understand the view of the applicant about the efficiencies of scale, but there will be long-term impacts on the residents of the street um, with with the high number of parking uh, demand added to the street. So may I have a motion, please? Um, I'm going to make a motion to deny without prejudice uh, and with, in the hope that there is a, a redesign of the project that deals with some of the issue. 10 to 23 is a big jump. 
uh, that deals with the issue of density and sorts out some, some of the issues with your neighbors. May I have a second? I'll second uh, that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion Aye. carries. Thank you, everybody. Motion yes, carries. On, Good luck with right. your next. Was there an opposition there, Madam Chair? Yep, me. Uh, so that Joe. was Joe in opposition. Okay. A motion carries. Calling the next two cases, calling BOA 115 2642 31 Senator Bowling Circle. There's a companion case, BOA 115 2640 41 Senator Bowling Circle. This is for 31, construct a new two story wood frame, 2,268 square foot single family dwelling on a 7,015 square foot lot. The violation is Article 60, Section 11. The use is conditional, single family dwelling is conditional use in this EPS subdistrict. Violation of Article 60, Section 12, front yard setback is insufficient. This is for 41, Senator Bowling Circle, construct a new two story wood frame, 2,340 square foot single dwelling on a 5,900 square foot lot. The violation of Article 60, Section of the single family is a conditional use in an EPS subdistrict. And Article 60, Section 12, the front yard setback is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is John Lydon, appearing on behalf of uh, Cruise Development Corporation as their attorney. My office address is 512 Gallivan Boulevard, Suite 205 in Dorchester, Massachusetts. The proposal before you, the proposals before you seek to construct a two-story single-family three-bedroom home on uh, two separate parcels in Mattapan. Um, the violations are as noted. Uh, the first is- Can you tell uh, us what, what, what is an EPS subdistrict? Well, uh, the uh, Enterprise Protection Subdistrict was created, to my knowledge, uh, on the site of what used to be the Boston State Hospital. Yeah. Um, it seeks to protect- so, um, Where is Mr. Feaster? Because he usually represents these parcels. I, I cannot answer, I, I don't know. Okay, sure. okay, that sorry, go ahead. Madam yeah. Chair, this, this zoning came about, if you remember, way back when, the empowerment zone. Yep. Uh, this zoning came for that because the empowerment zone, I believe, went across the site. Uh, the empowerment zone? Oh, the enterprise community. Okay. Okay. Um, so, this, uh, so can you tell us, uh, Councillor, how this fills in all the construction that Cruz has done on the site? Uh, absolutely, I'd be glad to. Um, so the, this project was originally approved in 2005 as part of a 99 unit three phase development. That uh, project has been ongoing ever since and the structures, all single family for the most part, have been uh, built on an as, on an on demand basis. Um, they've been consistently in development, they've been in consistent construction. Uh, the original variances were approved uh, as the case that they've been on, a, on an annual or a biannual basis from time to time over the last 15 years. So this, this project from the initial approval has not changed. All the violations are the same, the, the layout is the same, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, absolutely, no changes whatsoever. Okay, yes, because um, we are used to seeing uh, Mr. Feaster represent these projects. Um, uh, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, the drawings are fine. They're consistent with uh, the other uh, units on that uh, parcel, uh, the, except for one element. They're, the basements are occupied, and they are, uh, if you look at um, G4.3, if you look at wall section A, they are 5 foot 3. The basement floor is 5 foot 3 below grade, which is really... And for some reason, 30, even though the, the designs are relatively identical, 31 has a bedroom in that, in that basement, whereas 41 doesn't. And I think that's, that's a problem. But other than that, the, the, the drawings are fine. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dante Peebles here from the Office of Neighborhood Services. And we would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Um, we believe this application will bring new single family homes to the neighborhood, and we believe this is a great addition, addition to the community. Thank you. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dustin Gardner, on behalf of City Councilor Andrea Kimball's office. We would also like to go on record in support. Madam, oh. 
Madam Chair, we have no raised hands for this proposal. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the BPDA design review uh, with a proviso that uh, number 31 not have a bedroom in the basement. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Thank you. Motion carries. Good luck. Following the next case, calling DOA 116 3856 1175 Dorchester Avenue. This erect a new three story residential over an existing one story building. The violations, Article 65, Section 41, off street parking and loading is insufficient. Article 65, Section 8, MFR and the retail are forbidden in three out of the 3,000 subdistricts. Article 65, Section 9, the additional lot area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building has excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the building has excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, the rear yard, Section 9, rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, I need to recuse myself on this matter. Sorry, Councilor. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Liebers. <clears throat> um, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street in Boston. I apologize uh, for my voice. Um, I'm a little hoarse, but it is me. Um, with me today is Jennifer Engelhart from the Broadway Company, who's the property owner, developer, and Mike Delafave, uh, who's the architect from Rhodey Architects. Um, we did provide a presentation, Madam Chair. It doesn't look like it made it to you guys uh, up on the screen, so I apologize. Looks like we're looking at the, uh, the zoning set. But 1175 Dodd Avenue, it's on the co it is a corner parcel. It is on the corner of Dodd Ave and Roach Street. And what's there now is a single story brick commercial building that takes up a majority of the lot. Um, there is a small asphalt parking area on the right side of the existing building, and it's a 4,851 uh, square foot lot. Um, it's an underutilized property site in that it only has a, a single Councilor, story. Councilor, can you yep, save yep. your voice, please, and tell us directly? Yep, yep. Because yep. it's not clear how many units are proposed. And of course, the, you know, the, the, the type of units and the square footage, please. Yes, yep. absolutely. And, and we apologize, this was in our presentation, but again, it doesn't look like it got to you folks. So what's being proposed is the commercial space will remain. Um, on the ground floor and in the basement. And what's being proposed on top is a classic kind of infill project of a three-story vertical residential addition with nine units. The nine units are uh, include six two-bedroom units and three three-bedroom units. The six two-bedroom units are roughly 900 square feet on average, so pretty ample size. And the three three-bed units are all approximately 1,100 square feet inside. So again, a very uh, ample size unit. And talking to the neighborhood group, Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association, and other folks in the neighborhood, the, 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 what we heard back was that larger size units, not cramming in studios and one beds was what was preferred. Okay, so let me just ask you a, a, a few questions. Um, yes, tell us a couple of questions. First, tell us about the parking. And second, this is a 3D 3000. So again, the building form looks like a triple decker. Uh, can you tell us how, how, this, um, how this building form that's being proposed works? And again, tell us about the um, parking yeah. and if there is a roof deck proposed. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I can answer, there, there is no roof deck being proposed. That's the easy one, right, Mike? That, that is correct. Yep. So, the, so first, the first easy one, Madam Chair, is there's no roof deck being proposed. Your question as to the parking. So, we are, you know, severely hampered by the lot in terms of we're, we're repurposing. We're not, you know, we we're not um, demolishing the existing commercial building, right? We want to use that as the best practice. It's a good. It's a good. Uh, building and need, you know needs some upgrades, but it's in good shape. We don't want to demolish that. And by you know by using and repurposing and, and, and updating that existing commercial building, 
we're kind of hampered by the lot and what we can do on the lot in terms of off-street parking. So there is um, some spaces off to the right-hand side that we're going to utilize. Um, uh, specifically, the thought here is to utilize one of those spaces as a flex space for the commercial um, space and then residential at night. But we're also uh, had discussions with the neighborhood group to house one of these kind of shared vehicle spaces only for the building, which have become more and more um, prevalent in the city. And so we've agreed to, uh, to do that as well. So there would be a kind of shared zip car space, but only for the building, not, not for the public. And as for the parking too, you know, we are on a corner lot. Um, we are within literally five minutes down Bay Street of the Salmon Hill MBTA station. So um, tell us, so tell us is, again about the yeah, building yeah. design and how it fits into the yep. 3D, 3FD model. Yeah, so it, that's a good question, Madam Chair. I mean, again, we're a little hampered by, we can't really do a triple decker here because we're, con we're, we're conserving the existing commercial building that's there now. We are a corner lot, so we're not in the middle of the block. Um, that's important as well. We're also in the Grover's Corner Planning Study, which um, you know Mike can discuss a little bit more in the design review um, aspect of that, but we are uh, consistent with those recommended guidelines of that planning study. So you're right, we are in a 3FD zone, but we would suggest that you know based on what's on the lot now, the location in that planning study, that this is a, 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 a building type that fits in with the, with the neighborhood and what's there now. Mike, as the architect, you oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sure. Um, yep. Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? Um, the plans are good. A uh, couple questions. Um, yes, sir. The, uh, the retail tenant uh, will occupy, obviously, the first floor. The basement uh, elevation on any 100 just says basement tenant. Does that mean it's storage for the retail or will it be usable space? What is the function of the basement? Yeah, so my understanding, Mr. Ehrlich, is that that would be a separate commercial space as it is now. Uh, Jennifer from the property group could answer that in more detail, or maybe Mike, but that would not be storage. It would be a separate commercial space. So you'll have you'll have one commercial space on the first floor and another, another one, a separate uh, entity on the basement? I believe that is the plan. Um, Mike, is that correct? Uh, Mike Delafave, uh, Rody Architects, 535 Albany Street. Um, the way the plans show currently, um, that basement space would be part of the uh, ground level tenant, uh, showing two, uh, say two means of egress, uh, et cetera, and an elevator uh, connected to that street level component. Right. That, so that's, what I, that's what I. That's what I. That's what I assume. So that is that is correct. So, but I mean, so there'll be. Uh, commercial space on both floors. Uh, the commercial space that's in the basement will be part of the uh, uh, square footage of the street level space. Um, it, it mainly for uh, likely storage or uh, prep space for that uh, tenant. Okay. okay, and and then where where are the uh, mechanical rooms for the, for the residential? Are they up in the on the up in the units themselves, or are they in the basement? Uh, there will likely be uh, a, um, a kind of centralized uh, electrical room in the basement uh, with access uh, from the rear stair, uh, and then uh, the uh, mechanical units for each uh, tenant will be our, uh, in, in the apartments. Okay. It would be helpful if the plans are showed an electrical room, uh, but, uh, but the, the plans no, are good. No. Any questions from the board? Madam yes. Chair, this, this is uh, Jeff Hampton at the BPDA. Uh -huh. so, so I just wanted to put this, this stretch of Dodd Ave in context for you. It's right across the street. So this is a very small triple-decker subdistrict, and I know you and I are in agreement about how we want you know, the, the structures to look. But there are two similar types of uses uh, down the block. Um, that have commercial on the first floor and residential above it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think, Jeff, the, 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 the issue I have is I'm okay with the commercial. It's the upper floors that it, you know, represent the building type in yeah. some way. You know, yeah, there, there are only two, tr two true tri triple-deckers 
in okay. this uh, zoning district because it does front on Dodd Ave and most of the property in that section of Dorchester Avenue is zoned neighborhood shopping with the exception of these two blocks. Okay, thank you. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. There was an abutters meeting held for this on March 8th, and the applicant has conducted significant outreach to the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association uh, and received their support for this proposal. Um, as noted, this is in a changing portion of Dorchester Avenue. It's right down the street from Dot Block. It's part of the Glover's Corner um, planning study. Um, we're excited to see the commercial space in this portion of the neighborhood and the increased density above. Um, we'd like to go on record in support, but ask for continued BPDA design review. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Julie Ryan from City Council Frank Baker's office. We would also like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Asabi George's office. would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Council, would like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support as well. Given all this information, may I have a motion, please? Um, I'll make a motion to approve with uh, BPDA the BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, it's now 11.06. I'm going to call the 11 o'clock cases. Are there any deferrals or withdrawals for 11 o'clock? I repeat one more time. Uh, the 11 o'clock hearing, I need deferrals or withdrawals. Hearing none, I'll go to the next case. Calling case BOA 1160268 Acadia Street. This is a change of art from a two family to a six family and construct a rear addition to extend living space to the existing structure, providing six total parking spaces. The violation of Article 10, Section 1, a limitation of off street parking. Article 65, Section 8, the multifamily is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in stories. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9.2, the dimensional regulations, the location of the main entrance. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Attorney John Barry from the Law Office of John D. Barry, located at 400 Granite Ave in Milton, Massachusetts. Uh, the architect on the project, the architectural firm, is RCA LLC. And with me today is James Christopher, principal manager. Uh, and they, they're located at 1156 Dorchester Avenue in Dorchester, Mass., as well. Um, as was just read into the record, this is a request for a change of occupancy from a two family to a six family residence. Uh, just for the sense of context for the board, uh, this was before the board in July of 2020, on July 28th. Uh, at that time, it was a proposal for eight units. Uh, the proposal was denied uh, with, without prejudice. Uh, there was a need for a unanimous vote that day. There was one, one vote in opposition. Um, and the direction of the board at that time uh, was to try to scale back um, the unit count and some square footage of the building and to design a way the, at that time, the proposal had living space in the basement. Um, so the proposal that's before the board today did take all of that into account. Um, if I can go over what the, there's six units, uh, unit number one. Tell us, please tell us what the breakdown and, and, uh, is. 1,620. Can I, can I just ask you, what is the breakdown of the- I apologize, the board, there's, a, there's a breakdown. What bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and the average square feet of each? Certainly, so each unit is a three bedroom. Uh, the only thing that changes is there's a difference. There are two and two and a half baths. Um, basically, unit two is a two and a half bath. Unit one and three through six are all two baths. They're and what's two bedroom, the average two square feet? The average square feet, uh, units three through six are 1,336 square feet. Uh, unit one and two are.
Looks like you froze on us. Uh, I can pick that up, Madam Chair. Sure. Uh, unit, units one and two, uh, unit one is 1,628 square feet. Uh, that's okay. a three bed, two bath, and unit two is a 1,600 square foot unit. So they range in size from 1,336 to 1,628. That's correct. Um, so please talk again about um, those, the parking size and manu maneuverability and the location of the main entrance. Sure. So the, the, we are maintaining the existing building. So the main entrance for the front unit um, will be off of the existing front door and porch. The secondary entrance will be provided down a walkway to the rear units. Um, so those rear units, their side door is accessed off of the rear of the existing building. Um, and those, uh, you enter into a common stairwell and into unit one at grade and then up to the other units um, for, the, for the egress. The, Vehicle parking has been reduced to six spots at the request of the community. Um, we had the parking along the edges and closer to the rear of the property at the request of the abutters and the Fields Corner Civic Association. We dropped the parking from nine spaces to six and we oriented them in such a way that they are at the rear of the cantilever at grade and uh, have created um, 16 feet of uh, open space from from the rear of the prop from the rear of the park parking to the rear of the property line and 30 feet of open space from the rear of the building um, to the rear of the property okay and this is a 2f 5,000 square foot zoning district how are the plans mr ehrlich well i recall this case and it's certainly better than six units as opposed to eight um it still strikes me it's a big jump from two to six and it take the the structure takes up almost all of the lot. Um, so I think there's an issue with density. A couple of questions. Uh, so it's advertised on the agenda as nine spaces, but I only see six. You said that the six is what it, uh, Mr. Christopher. That's what it is. That's correct, Mr. Ehrlich. We the um, we had originally proposed nine spaces to because in the early part of the community process, parking was a concern. Uh, as we went back and reduced the unit count. The neighbors requested that due to its proximity to the train station, we could create a little more open space okay. um, and reduce the parking. So that was directly a request of the community. Okay. Um, all right, all right, that's fine. So uh, this, I just want to be, be clear on that. And they, my second question is that it appears from the drawings there's a 20 foot curb cut, and I'm wondering why that is. Uh, the curb cut is existing, Mr. Ehrlich. Why? Why would? It, why would there have been a twenty-foot curb cut? I, I don't know. I can I can provide clarity on that, but um, that's we're not modifying the existing curb cut. No, no, I understand, but I'm just okay. Just I, I, I like, I'm not I sure. Like, uh, I, maybe, uh, Madam Chair, I, Bob D'Amico has spoke on this. Would you like me to put that into the record? Yes, case? please. Okay, so Bob has spoke. Bob D'Amico, BTD, uh, on twenty-three Acadia Street. Uh, the, the applicant should only be allowed to park three vehicles in maneuverability, the rear of the home, and they should be parked on a 45 degree angle to allow to allow the safe maneuverability. Also, the curb cut should be between 10 and 12 feet to allow the convenient entry and exit and comply with BTD regulations. Okay. Um, and also, I should bring the board's attention to, be, to the BPDA recommendation. Is um, anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is George Quinton with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office held its first butters meeting for the applicant at 23 Arcadia Street on September 5th, 2019, and its second on February 24th, 2021. The applicant, a few corner resident for over 24, 25 years, has received 17 letters of support from butters and community members and a letter of support from the Fields Corner Civic Association for the proposed six units and six parking spots. Over the last year and a half, the applicant has presented numerous times before the Fields Corner Civic Association since and has gone above and beyond in working earnestly with the community to accommodate requests regarding green space, parking spots, as well as the size of the building and its units, leading to consensus on the op optimal scope of the project. So at this time, our office would like to go on record in support of the proposal at 23 Arcadia Street. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, um, just 
This is Julie Ryan from City Council Frank Baker's office. We would also like to go on record in support of the project. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Council Wasabi George's office. would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty, Council to go on record in support. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I do have one raised hand by caller nine. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have some letters of support. Okay, and caller nine, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Good morning, Madam De Tommy. I support this one, Chair. Did you catch that? Okay. Madam Chair, I have no addition. Oh, sorry, I have another caller here. Caller 14, you've been unmuted. 617-586. Can you state your name and address, please? Hello? Hi. My name is Hi. Hello? Hi. Yep, can you state your name and address? Yeah, yeah, my name is Jules. I live 20, I carry a street. I spoke 23, I carry a street. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Don't you go. And given all this information, may I have a motion, please? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve with the BPDA design review, which takes a question of density, with, and also BTD design review uh, for the number of parking spaces and a reduction of the um, curb cut. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much for your time. Calling the next case, calling VOA 1007093, 37 River Street. This is erect a new three-story building with seven residential units and 12 parking spaces. There will be individual roof decks built for the top floor dwelling units. Violations are Article 65, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 65, Section 8, accessory parking is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Daniel Toscano, attorney at law. I'm located at 1 State Street, Boston, Mass. I represent the owner of uh, 37 River Street, Scott Dabney, who's on the call with us today. Also, I'd like to introduce uh, Ryan Sprague from M. Bach, who is the architect on this property. Um, so. Madam Chair, members of the board, we're seeking your approval to, this is an empty lot located in the 2F 6000 uh, sub-district, uh, it's in Mattapan. It's at the corner of River Street and O'Morton Street, and we'd like to erect a, a three-story building for seven condominium units, uh, Madam Chair. We also, we want to uh, have 12 parking spots at this location, so we meet the parking requirement in this uh, sub-district. Um, the unit sizes would be on the first floor is a one bedroom condominium, which is 780 square feet. And we are going to dedicate that as an affordable unit to the community. Uh, moving up to the second floor, where there's going to be uh, two, three bedroom units and one two bedroom unit on the second floor and also on the third floor. The two bedroom units are 1,150 square feet and the three bedroom units range from 1,380 square feet to 1,430 square feet. As the secretary mentioned, there are individual roof decks. There are three roof decks on the roof that are gonna be exclusive use of the top unit, uh, unit owners and they're gonna be accessible by hatch only and it's, it's gonna be just for the units that are on the top floor. In regards to the violations of the zoning code, we do have a, uh, a use violation, which is a multifamily. Uh, we're proposing seven condominiums and a two family, but we believe this is a reasonable use given the fact that it's on the corner of River Street and Old Morton Street. It's a 700, almost a 7,700 square foot lot, which has been an empty lot, vacant lot for quite some time since my client has purchased the property. Um, and it butts, um, 
an, another building, 43, which is a three-story, 16-unit building. Across the street, it's a neighborhood shopping district, but there's the old schoolhouse with the multifamily residential units, and there are other multifamily residential units in the area. As for the accessory parking, I don't believe that's a violation. I went through the zoning code. I believe Ryan Sprague, if you want more information, could probably uh, elaborate on that. I don't believe it's a violation. The floor area ratio. So, um, so is is this project providing accessory parking for somebody else? No, it's not, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just, um, so, okay, sounds like you covered everything. How are the plans, um, how are the plans, um, Mr. Ehrlich? Yeah, the drawings are adequate. Okay. So this is just off, um, it's just off of, um, okay, Washington Street. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Is anybody here to speak in opposition? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, Dante Peoples here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go in on record in opposition of this proposal. We, don't, we do not believe this is a good fit for the community, for the neighborhood. The application went through an extensive community process where issues such as displacement of parking, overflow of trash, and upkeep of units were raised. Um, this was at an abundant meeting on April 1st, 2021. The applicant has also received a number of letters of opposition that should be on record. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mr. Peoples, um, Dante, yes. this is uh, going to replace uh, a lot. Um, so is it that the owner has not upkept the lot? The, the lot, um, what I have is the lot as well as um, the outside of, of the property. Okay. So like, yep. Sorry. Okay, thank you. No, thank um, you. Go ahead, if there's anybody else to speak and support our opposition. Morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dustin Gardner on behalf of City Council Andrea Campbell's office. We would also like to go on record in opposition uh, with the Direct Abutters and Civic Associations. Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands. Madam, Madam Chair, Secretary here, we do have letters of support and letters of opposition. Thank you. All right. Fatima, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Fatima Owens Long, 34 Burma Street, Mattapan. Uh, the council goes in opposition and agreement with the um, Civic Association as well as the director Butters. In addition, I have been over the past year delivering groceries to residents who live at 43 River Street. The driveway or spot to which directly is in between the vacant lot and that building is very narrow. There is, it's hard, there actually is a entrance way for four residents at 43 uh, River Street that face that parking, the empty lot. The lot is a dirt lot to which currently every day at least uh, between eight to 10 cars park in at any time, even though it is not considered that is the purpose for that lot. So, um, uh, uh, Ms. Ali Salam, let me just ask you, Yes. Um, so the what is the opposition based on? Is it the based, yeah? Go ahead. Uh, the opposition is based on that the proposed um, density of the of the units would be too much for a very narrow street. The street that it comes out on is off of River Street. It's a one way. Uh, it already has two way parking on both sides. It is um, incredibly difficult to maneuver um, in and out, and there really isn't, according to the designs, it's not probable and doesn't make sense that if you have um, residents whose front entryway faces a lot, would be facing a, a different building, how they would also come in and out, um, because there is a dumpster that is there already for that apartment building. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else to speak on this? Ms. Susan Lombardi, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Uh, good morning. My name is Susan Lombardi Verticelli. I'm at 3 Taylor Terrace across the street from the parcel. Um, I oppose this project along with dozens of abutters, direct and otherwise. The parcel is listed as a two family. 
and the planned seven units with almost three times the FAR is excessive by design. The design is not in line with the historic buildings of Mattapan and Lower Mills, and the building would create an undue parking burden on the neighborhood. The design would also create a safety and fire hazard, not only for those living in the building, but to the neighborhood at large. The owner currently does not take care of either of the properties that he owns there, and my faith that he would build something to support the community is nil. It's also Thank important you. to it's Thank also you. important to note. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, um, Ms. Ambassador, may I hear from one more person? Because I think Ms. Lombardi, you've been very, um, you've, you've gotten right to the point, so thank you. Okay, David Perry, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Hi, um, David Perry, I'm at 66 Old Morton. Um, I'm in favor of the project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, given that information, um, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to deny. Madam, Madam Chair, I know there's a motion. May I respond to some of the, the concerns of what we've heard? Oh, um, yeah, uh, yes, my, my apologies, yes. Give us a quick rebuttal. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Madam Chair. So this has been an, a, a vacant lot, and I know there's been some parking that's been on there. Um, there's been parking there prior to my client owning it. Uh, it's not it's not zoned for parking. Uh, he hasn't opposed so, people so parking. Councillor, councillor, it's uh, it sounds like there's also a concern about density. This is a two F six thousand district, and there's proposed seven units on twelve spaces. Um, so yeah. you know you might want to give a quick response to that. So looking at the the lot size, it's seventy seven hundred square feet of lot size. We've made considerable changes to the. The, or from the original plan from the rayon setback because this is a shallow lot we are 22 feet from the property lines from our butter at old uh old morton street so there is plenty of room in the back um there are seven units they're adequate size and there is i believe it's reasonable use of the property given the fact that um right next door is a 16 residential building a couple of doors down there was a proposal i think there's like nine or ten uh townhouse style uh units so given the, the size of the lot and, and we can address that the unit size is uh adequate size and we believe it fits uh nicely within that area because it's at the corner of river street and okay, the councillor, councillor, i'm going to ask you just for a minute to thank you for your response um you. may i have a motion from the board yeah, I made a motion to deny. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you for your time. Thank you, Councillor. You're welcome. Calling the next case, calling BOA 116 1026 85 to 93 Sutherland Road. This is to demolish the front entrance canopy of an existing four-story apartment building and replace it with a new canopy over a new package door enclosure to one side of the entrance. The violation article 51, section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair on the board. My name is Derek Rubinoff. I'm Derek Rubinoff, architect, and the, uh, the uh, owner of the building from Octagon Properties, David Lapidus um, of Brookline, is on the uh, phone with us here. Um, Ms. Edwards, can you go directly and show us what this proposed canopy is, 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 is to look like? Oh, uh, yes, certainly. There's, um, we just skipped by the existing conditions where there is already an existing canopy that's there. The building was built in, in, uh, around 1965 or so. It's a very simple modern box. You see a lot of these around, uh, the city and it's got a very rather insufficient, um, and, and uninviting existing entrance. The problem with the, 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 the origin of the project came because there's 13 I'm sorry, of, yeah. I'm sorry um, um, Mr. Rubinoff. So yep. this that we are looking at 3.1 is the proposed entranceway, is the proposed canopy? That's the proposed canopy and then there's a, a proposed package enclosure because there's no real lobby in this building. There's no place for uh, Amazon and other couriers to drop off packages for the 32 units in this building and the 16 units in the in the co one building next door at 90 so how, many, how many square feet is this is this enclosure uh it's about 80 or so okay yeah. how are the plans um mr Ulick? um what you see is what you got it's pretty de minimis okay any questions from the board is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal 
Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We conducted an abutters meeting on February 24th. Uh, no concerns were raised at the abutters meeting. Uh, the applicant went on to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association, received their full support as well. Thank you. Hello, this is Marma Cray from Councilor Green's office. We'd like to go on record as being in support of this project. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Savi George's office. would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have letters of support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand by caller 14. Um, they might be for the other project. Are you here for this project? Um, can you state your name and address for this proposal if you're interested in speaking on it? I think the two raised hands are from previous. Uh, uh, yeah. Ma Madam Chair, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Alston Improvement Association. Uh, we'd like to go in support. Thank you. All set, Ms. Ambassador? Yes, I think we're all set. Thank you. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Uh, Jeff, do you, want, do you want this on review? Um, we should, right? Because it's done. No, I, you know what? No, I don't. I'm not going to be that picky today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Yeah. yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Following the last case for 930, calling BOA 11. 15005 230 Harvard Avenue. This is a change of occupancy from a medical marijuana treatment center to a cannabis establishment. No work to be done. The violation of Article 51, Section 16. A cannabis establishment is conditional. And Article 9, Section 2, a change in non conforming use. Name and address for the record, please. Hello, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is Mike Ross. I'm an attorney with the business address of One International Place. I'm here on the call today with the CEO of Mayflower Medicinals, Inc., John Henderson, as well as Andy Plant, the Director of Risk Management. Um, this is an existing building um, that's currently operating as a medical uh, dispensary <clears throat> in a community uh, commercial sub-district. Uh, it was approved by uh, this board actually in July of 2016 and opened in July of 2018. And we're here today to change the use of medical marijuana treatment center to cannabis establishment, which would allow uh, both the operation of medical and adult use uh, to serve both patients and customers at this facility. Uh, this is a single floor standalone uh, building, a former bank uh, with eight existing on-site parking spaces uh, in the rear of the building. Uh, the floor plan shows a 1,400 square foot uh, single floor program where the patients and customers enter uh, through the front of the building and then exit through the rear of the building. Uh, there, there are six point of sales. So, Counselor, uh, you know, it's, uh, amazingly enough, I do remember this project. <laughs> um, can you talk to uh, us about the internal circulation and I happened to be driving by Route 9 the other day, and for the fact that the Brookline facility has been open for so long, there's still uh, lines outside the building. So can you just explain to us how things are supposed to work internally? Yes. Um, so Harvard Ave is on the bottom of your screen, and the, uh, the, the rear of the building and the parking area is to the left and, and behind. Um, uh, patients and customers would enter through the front of the um of the building and we do have our own private property um uh it's not it's not emptying directly onto the public sidewalk um we're seeing about 120 customers a day um and we anticipate there'll be about 240 about double that uh, when we open uh, as a uh, a co-located facility i'll enter through the front that squiggly kind of line right there is just the uh is the bank of, of point of sales. Uh, we have six, I mentioned, we're only using three at the, at the moment. We've never really needed to uh, ramp this up to a into all six going. It's just, we're not just not, um, you know, we have plenty of throughput and plenty of capacity and we're not seeing, we're not seeing the lines that Netta saw or is even if maybe you saw them recently, I, I heard even Netta isn't seeing those, the lines they used to see. 
because so many of these other dispensaries are starting to open throughout the throughout the region. And what are the proposed hours of operation? The proposed hours are 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, the proponent has um, proposed that he would operate as appointment only for the first 30 days just to really kind of start slow and uh, and get his uh, feet under feet under them. Uh, and then they would convert to just straight walk in uh, thereafter. Um, there are two secure there are um, right now there's one security guard that mostly spends uh, its time outside the uh, facility. Um, it's a third party security company. We would propose going back up to two security guards for you know a month or two months like we did when this was medical before ramping back down to one unless we feel like we need to stay with two security guards. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? There's no change, uh, so the plans are fine. Any questions from the board? This is uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Trey Ross. This is um, near the intersection of uh, Commonwealth Avenue, correct? So this is near the CVS and the TJ Maxx department store? Uh, correct, Mr. Lewis. And is there, is there a, I know it's a freestanding building. I'm familiar with the site. So um, I went by the neighborhood. What, the, the parking area, uh, there's, no, there's no parking on premises, correct? It's not being used for parking on premises. Uh, there are eight parking spaces on site. And are those for, for customer use and staff use, or how are they being used presently? Uh, there is no restriction uh, on the customer, uh, on the staff using it. If you scroll up, you'll see a site plan, which gives you a better view, uh, Madam Ambassador. Um, the, um, there should be a site plan in the previous. But, but um, there is no prohibition, but we've asked our customers uh, and incented our customers to use transit demand management uh, tools, uh, public transportation, and the like, because we, you know, we value those spaces and it makes it easier for customers to come in and, and find a parking space. Generally, the parking um, is not all full throughout the day. Generally, we have capacity with 120 <clears throat> over the period of the 10 hour day. Uh, Mr. Ross, how close is it to a school? Uh, hi, Mr. Ross, we clear the 500 uh, and then some. I, um, we're not, we're, I guess the closest school would be the Horace Mann School which is thousands of miles away. Not thousands of miles. Thousands. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, thousands of feet away. And, Sorry. Um, and can we go back to see what your screening and buffering looks like? Because you are right on that Brookline line. Um, and just to see that there's fencing put up or something in there, um, just to secure the facility. Yeah, the um, the elevations are actually. I mean, they're not elevations; they're just photos. So we can get a pretty good idea if you, of what the um, yeah. There's some plantings. Um, we you know we we're happy to to, to take a look at that. Um, it, it's it's a you know, we've improved the building. The building has been like that for a long time, as Mr. Lieber pointed out. You know, the mm -hmm. bikes pull up, and um, it doesn't it hasn't really changed. Uh, we've been, we've certainly improved it uh, from its previous state. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, let go on record in support of this proposal. We conducted a public meeting on April 2nd of 2019. Uh, since then, the applicant has met with the Alston Civic Association several times and also held their own community meetings as well. Uh, they received ACA support, uh, and we also feel that they currently operate with little to no impacts on the community. Um, we think this demonstrates that they're ready for the next step to go recreational. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have numerous letters of support. Madam Chair, you have a raised hand by Anthony. Anthony, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Tony, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Name yes, and address uh, correct. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tony Disidoro representing the Alston Civic Association. We would like to echo the comments of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services and go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no additional raise hands for this proposal. 
Can you just check on Annabelle Gomes? Because I know sometimes she has a hard time being seen. But, okay. Annabelle? Madam Chair, Annabelle Gomes of the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. Uh, they did not present to us, so we did not vote on this okay. presentation. There was no outreach to us, so uh, there fine. was no vote on it. Thank you. Given this information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mo motion to approve. Is this to this? Uh, we, this we just need to consistent, so it's to this applicant this only? Applicant only. Yep. This yep. Is there a second? Second. Do we want to put anything in about screening and buffering? Um, uh, tell us, Mr. Olick, because you're having a close look at the plan. What do you think? I mean, it, uh, Mr. Ross is correct. There's some plantings there, but it certainly, it, it still looks pretty stark. So I think. Okay. Would, yeah. Okay. So design review for screening and buffering. Yep. Okay. And there's a, whoever seconded, is that okay? I accept oh. that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Ligris, you're opposed. Motion right. carries. Um, motion carries. Uh, Mr. Fortune, can we go through the recommendations and Thank then you take much. and then uh, Mr. Fortune, sorry, and then go and then we'll take a, a ten minute break. Can do that. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I will call the uh, recommendations that were heard on April 15th uh, at 1010 Mass Ave at 5 p.m. I'll call them into the record and then we'll get a motion to approve. Case BOA 1142725 Kelly Court was to convert an existing roof into a family recreation and install a six foot high fence. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1158578 Laurel Street was to build another story on an existing two-story at 10 by 7 L in the rear of the building was approved with BPDA. The next two cases, BOA 1130851, two Mount Vernon, and BOA 113850, it was, uh, was a new shed dormer and an existing habitable attic floor and roof deck, it was approved with BPDA. The building code was approved uh, BOA 115-6955-477 four to 479 East 3rd Street was installed exterior spiral staircase and roof deck was approved with BPDA. BOA 115-0451-583 to 583R 8th, 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 Street, 8th Street. And it was proposed three off street parking and their value easement with 581 East 8th. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 115 23 to 25 Abroad Street it was an interior exterior renovation of a two family and two story exterior deck. It was approved with BPDA and no, and read the writing, sorry. Don't know about the deck. No roof deck, thank you. The next case, BOA 116-1773-54 West Moreland Street. It was a proposed dormer addition to extend living space to the third floor and adding deck that was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1137028-9 Wayanaki Street. It was a proposed 800 square foot second addition and 100 square foot single story rear addition on a half, one and a half story cape. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 115-6565-79 Corbett Street. It was an asphalt driveway with two R Street parking. It was approved. Case BOA 1160443 Oak Crest Road. It was a gut renovation and a 10 by 10 one story addition. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1160969 11 Porter Terrace. It was a create a 130 square foot addition on the second floor and detached two story single family house. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1160818-53 Tyndale Street. It was a renovation of existing garage to an art studio. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1158404-214 Beach Street. It was a kitchen and powder renovation. It was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 1156154-94 Cass Street. <coughs> it was a finished attic. No other work to be done. It was approved. Case BOA 116-65692, 109 Perham Street. It was out of dormant roof. Roof. It was it was approved with BPDA. 
Case BOA 114-1289, 11 Bagnall Street. It was an extension of living space to the basement with existing single family dwelling and renovate basement and at egress, it was approved with BPDA. Case BOA 115-5715, 28 Roseberry Street. It was a change of art from a one family dwelling to a two family. It was approved with no bedrooms in the basement. Case BOA 1065297, 16 Dustin Street. It was deferred to the 427 board today at 1230. So that concludes our... Um, May I have a motion, please? Uh, what, did, I get, did I hear a motion? I'll make a motion. So, to sorry, I was muted. Uh, motion to concur with the recommendations. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the meeting is now adjourned until 11.55.
Good morning. Uh, the City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing from for April 27th is now in session. This is, uh, we're getting prepared to hear the 11 o'clock cases, but I just should put this in, on, in the record that this hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the open meeting law and the executive order of Governor Baker suspending certain provisions thereof due to the ongoing public health crisis. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the WebEx event platform. This hearing is also being live streamed. In order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. The information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to comment. As with our in-person meeting, comments and support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as followed, elected officials, representative of elected officials and members of the public. The number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting will be limited by the chair as time constraints require. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by the project. That is, those individuals live, who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raise your hand icon in the application via the WebEx event platform. To raise your hand, click the participant information icon. From there, find your name, and on the lower right hand side, you should see a hand raising icon. Click the icon and your hand will be virtually raised. Click it again and your hand should go down. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star three to raise your hand. Again, please press star three if you are co connecting by telephone. Those called upon to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, Please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record. Mr. Fortune. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to say I, I already asked for deferrals or withdrawals, but I'll give you another opportunity if there are any deferrals or withdrawals for 11 o'clock. Hearing none, I'll call the first case, calling DOA 112 8259 546 Saratoga Street. This is to raise the existing structure. Erect a four-story, four-unit multifamily dwelling containing 4,860 square feet of gross floor area with private direct access roof decks for units three and four. The violation is Article 2017-5. This is in the East Boston iPod. Article 53, Section 12, excessive FAR. Article 53, Section 12, the height has been exceeded. And Article 53, Section 56, insufficient parking, off-street, and loading requirements. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Richard Linz, 245 Sumner Street, East Boston, on behalf of the petitioner, Harrison Levinsky, who is with me today. Also, uh, Eric Zacherson, who is the project architect, uh, is on the Zoom call. Uh, Madam Chair, as the secretary indicated, this involves the demolition of existing single-family structure. Um, I would describe this as being located on probably the furthest edge of Eagle Hill uh, neighborhood. Uh, it is actually uh, in a zoning district that shares two boundaries. Uh, one is the MER uh, Maritime Economic Reserve, as well as the neighborhood shopping district. Uh, the site is predominantly within the neighborhood shopping district, so the proposed multifamily use is an allowed permissible use in the district. Um, with respect to the unit sizes, uh, each unit uh, is a two bedroom, two bath. We anticipate uh, that the size of the units will range from about 950 square feet up to about 1,000 square feet. Uh, and we are proposing two private roof decks for the upper levels. Uh, the roof decks would be accessed uh, by stairwell, not by, ha uh, not by head house. Uh, we uh, ensured that the, uh, the architect incorporated that into the design. Uh, with respect to the relief that's necessary, I'm sure as the board is aware, the neighborhood shopping district is quite Counselor? flexible. 
Council, let me just ask a question. If you're sure. in the MER, M -E -R, uh, is there any uh, issues with base flood elevation? For this site, there is n there's no uh, issues. This is actually an elevated site higher than the base flood elevation. There's no, no flood zone concern. MER uh, is the adjoining industrial area, which uh, is owned, I believe, by Mobile Oil Corp. Uh, that is a parking lot that you can see from some of the context photos. Okay. But again, because, because a, only a fraction of the lot is within the MER, the predominant uh, district is neighborhood shopping, and therefore neighborhood shopping applies. Under so tell us area. about the parking. Uh, we are proposing no parking. However, you can see from the context photos, there is a low-cost public parking lot located directly across the street from this site. Uh, Councilor, but what, Councilor, but what happens when you're the attorney that comes to us proposing a development on that site? I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Oh, the, no, no, there's no, <laughs> if you go back to the to the photos, there is, there is no likely development on the site. It is a site that is owned by the Mass Highway Department. It's located under the McClellan Highway corridor. Uh, I don't anticipate, I don't think anybody ever anticipates anything being developed that will likely remain as uh, under highway parking uh, for the uh, you know, foreseeable future. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? The plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? I just, uh, just one comment on the plans. Um, what is the, uh, how does the height compare to uh, ab uh, adjacent buildings, Mr. Lynch? Uh, that section of Saratoga Street has uh, predominantly three-story buildings, Mr. Ehrlich. There is a commercial building uh, that is a bit higher, even though three stories at the, at the corner uh, as you go further down. Uh, I would point out that the lot immediately adjacent that is in the MER district, it's uh, vacant currently. Uh, the height limit is 55 feet, so we're at 42 feet, which would be lower than the adjoining district. Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support for this proposal. The applicant addressed several of the concerns expressed during the community process, and we also received three layers of support for this proposal. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would like to leave this proposal at the discretion of the board. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. Mr. Fortune? No, that is Madam Chair. Hmm. May I have a motion, please? Uh, motion to approve a BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling VOA 116-7625, 125 Saratoga Street. This is seeking to change the arc from a single-family residential dwelling to a two-family residential dwelling and also to erect rear decks. Violates Article 53, Section 56, Our Street Parking Loading Requirement, Article 53, Section 9, the Floyd Air Ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Matt Eckel with Drago and Toscano with the business address of 11 Beacon Street. Also on with me today is the owner of the property, Frazier Allen, and the project architect, Adam Glassman. As mentioned, we're seeking to change the occupancy of the existing single family residential dwelling to a two family residential dwelling, also to erect rear decks and renovate. This is in a 2,000 building <laughs> subdistrict and the lot size is 1,654 square feet. Uh, in terms of the two violations, we were cited for FAR, allowed as 0.8. We're proposing 1.52. This is a pre existing violation at approximately 1.16. Uh, also, we're requiring one additional parking space. Uh, as you can see from that cover page of the picture, we are in a set of row houses, uh, so we cannot provide any parking. So we're required one additional, and we are proposing zero. In terms of the layout, the two units would both be duplex style units. Unit one would be on the lower level and the first floor, approximately 1,175 square feet, It'd be a two bedroom unit. <laughs> two would be located on the second and third floor, a three bedroom unit at approximately 1,270 square feet. We're also proposing uh, rear decks, which you can see on the elevations uh, for the upper floors. 
But with that, I'll, I'll, have, I'll, I'll happily pause and take any questions from the board. How are the plans, Mr. Alec? Um, the plans are okay. I do have one concern about the garden level, my favorite term. Um, there's a there's a significant shift in the topography from front to back uh, of this building, and it's um, in the front. It's seven foot one from the uh, garden level or basement floor to grade, which is uh, pretty much means that the entire thing is underground. But in the rear, it's a grade. So uh, I would I think the plan should be okay if. Um, if the bedroom and the office were reversed so the bedroom was in the rear where there's more natural light. Other than that, they're okay. Miss um, uh, Edwards, can you please uh, move the, uh, the screen to the proposed? Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Lina Tramelli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on the record in support for this proposal. The Office of Neighborhood Services held two abares meetings for this proposal where the applicant worked close with the abares and addressed several of their concerns. This proposal also received support from Eagle Hill Civic Association and as well we received 12 letters of support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raise. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have a few letters of support. Um, given that information, may I have a motion, please? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion make a make. To, uh, to approve um, with BPDA design review, but to uh, to reverse the uh, bedroom and uh, office on the uh, on the ground floor on the garden level. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have concerns with the, the basement living space. To be honest, it, it's but. Um, I just wanted to say that for the record. Joe, Joe do, you, do you want to eliminate the... Yeah, I'd like to eliminate the, the basement bedroom completely. But you're okay with the office? The... the I... I, no, I, I like I, no, no living space in the basement. Yep. Madam, Madam Chair, if I may, we would have to look at inverting the unit, um, bringing the bedrooms upstairs if that's more amenable. We do have, as Mr. F uh, Ehrlich mentioned, a full lockout. Uh, so we do think we do have good light and air down there, but we would certainly look at bringing the bedroom up, up to the first floor if that is uh, yeah. more amenable yes. to the board. Okay. So let's be clear. Our motion is for approval with design review with no bedrooms in the basement. Yep. Right? Is there a yep. sec all second? Sec all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 117 1278, 748 to 750 East Broadway. This is to construct a new four story building with nine residential units, restaurant at the first floor, and combined lots at 740 48 East Broadway, 750 East Broadway, 65 L Street, and L Street and demolish all existing buildings. Violations, Article 68, Section 33, our street parking and loading. Article 68, Section 34.2, traffic visibility across the corner. Article 68, Section 7, restaurant use is conditional. Article 68, Section 8, a lot area for minimum required, 5,000 square feet proposed is 4,500 square feet. Article 68, Section 8, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 68, Section 8, the building height is excessive in feet. Article 68, Section 8, usable open space is insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, front yards insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, side yards insufficient. Article 68, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 68, Section 8.3, dimensional regulations, the location of the main entrance. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston, I'm representing uh, the uh, developer of the property, Joey Akari. 
Uh, Madam Chair, members, the uh, site is located at the intersection of East Broadway and L Street in South Boston uh, in an MFR, multifamily residential LS local service zoning subdistrict. It's presently uh, the home of a single story, uh, unused single story commercial building and a uh, three story residential building. The building in blue there and then the, uh, the small building um, in uh, in the foreground, the commercial building and the brown building uh, to the left of the blue. The site uh, is 4,500 square feet. Because of its location uh, at the busy intersection of L Street and East Broadway, uh, it was very early determined that creating off-street parking here would not be possible uh, due to the inability to safely introduce um, a curb cut for a new building. The um, building itself would be uh, uh, a ground floor uh, restaurant use of approximately 2,890 square feet. Uh, three stories above that, three residential units per floor. There would be six one bedroom plus units of approximately 970 to 1,054 square feet. Uh, and then three two bedroom units, also 970 to 1,054 square feet. Uh, there would be no roof deck, uh, no uh, projecting bays or balconies uh, of any kind. Um, with respect to the zoning, there, uh, the, uh, the application is cited, as I mentioned, for insufficient off-street parking. Traffic visibility across corner, uh, that situation is actually being improved with the proposed building by the setbacks uh, at the corner, which are an enhancement over what exists there now. The restaurant uses conditional. Um, my client owns and operates both the Broadway uh, and uh, Playwright, uh, also located on East Broadway nearby, and is very experienced in the operation of a restaurant. Uh, this does not meet the minimum lot size requirements. Uh, the FAR is excessive. Interestingly enough, in this MFR LS commercial, uh, residential slash commercial district, allowed density under the code is even less. So there's a maximum FAR here of 1.5 and a maximum allowed height of 35 feet, which is actually less than MFR. The proposed FAR here is 4.07, and the proposed building height is 42 feet 11 inches. There's a usable open space insufficiency cited. Again, there's no roof deck of any kind on the roof. That could have been addressed with common roof deck, but obviously that's nothing that the neighbors uh, wanted to see occur. So uh, the front, yeah. Councilor, hold on a couple of questions. What is the conceding capacity for the restaurant use? Uh, as drawn, it's currently 120, Madam Chair, but that is not a legal matter at this time. What I mean by that is uh, the restaurant would have to go through a separate process, community process, I and hearing with the licensing board. Uh, but the space as drawn would allow for 120. And is this an elevator building? Yes. It is. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? Uh, the plans are fine. Uh, Mr. Moriansi, the site plans say that it's a five-story building where all the rest of the drawing show it's four. I assume that's a typo. Yeah, in, in a sense, Mr. Ehrlich, uh, this began uh, as, as a somewhat different building. The, uh, but yes, the site, the site plan, um, any, note, any notation of this being a five-story building is incorrect. It's a four-story building. Okay. Uh, the, pl the plans are fine. Any just finishing up. Oh, I just want to finish yeah. on zoning for the record, if I, if I might. I just have a couple more. The front yard insufficiency. Uh, cited for L Street only, East Broadway's <laughs> compliance with the street modal. Uh, I would I would suggest that uh, that L Street is also in compliance with the street modal. Uh, side yard insufficiency. Um, the, the citation there is um, not provided on East Broadway. Again, that's allowing for street wall continuity in a commercial district. There's a rear yard insufficiency cited. 20 feet is required. Five feet is proposed. Again, this being a corner lot. Uh, the rear yard is uh, essentially a side yard, uh, as the building is, is viewed from L Street, where most of the building, in fact, exists. And finally, there's a, a violation cited for location of main entrance. Because of the layout of the building, uh, and to avoid any conflict between restaurant patrons and residents of the building, uh, the restaurant entrance uh, is on the East Broadway side, and the residential entrance is on the L Street side of the building, which causes that violation. Thank you. Is um, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? I'm Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, like to go on record and support. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Councillor Schling's office. The councillor would like to go on record in support. The councillor position is based on feedback from neighbors and the support of the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association. It is the councillor's understanding that the proponent has worked with neighbors and the civic group in good faith to, add, to address a number of concerns about the original proposal. And eventually, they were able to arrive at a compromise on key areas such as the height of the building, as well as, well as the setback creator in the rear. Moreover, the number of units was reduced from 11 to 9 with no text or roof text. In addition, the proponent has committed that they will work closely with the Boston Transportation Department to add this location to its list of rental properties ineligible for residential parking sticker, which will help alleviate concerns about adding additional residential vehicles to the existing parking difficulties in the area. The councillors acknowledge that while these compromises have gained the support of some neighbors and the civic group, opposition remains for, from other neighbors in the area. The support of the councillor stems from the proponent's willingness to work with all st stakeholders and it's the councillor's desire to see them continue to work together with the abutters neighbors and both the Gate of Heaven Neighborhood Association and the City Point Neighborhood Association on out outstanding concerns regarding capacity and bar seating, the hours of operation and closing time and outdoor dining. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley would like to, uh, from Councilor Sabi George's office, would like to echo the sentiments of Councilor Flynn and support this project. Thank you. I'm Chair, members of the board. Uh, Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. While the council has consistently opposed the zoning relief under Article 68, it recognizes here the unique conditions existing along West and East Broadway. This project is consistent with the ongoing redevelopment occurring along South Boston's main commercial thoroughfares. The developer reduced the unit count and the building site, agreed to resident parking restrictions, and the proposed restaurant will add to the vitality of the neighborhood. Any issues with the uh, specifics of the restaurant's operations will be subject of additional community process through the licensing board process. Thus, he would leave the decision to the board's discretion as to hardships under the code. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, we have two letters of opposition and the opposition seems to be from a four story, they want to see a three story and parking. Okay. Uh, given all the information we've heard, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPD design review. Is there a second? Can, second. can we put the can we put a proviso in about the BTD? Um, no resident parking. Can we put no. that provide? No. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, because um, as it is, there's a hard enough time enforcing our own regulations but others okay. too it makes it difficult so approval with design reviews there a second yep all those in favor aye aye any opposed motion carries thank you calling the next case calling boa 1170963 1258 to 1272 massachusetts avenue this is a proposed new restaurant fit out on the first floor the change of use from 40 dwelling units and one commercial space to 40 dwelling units and one restaurant inclusive of takeout use item 36a the violations article 65 section 15 the use of regulations a restaurant inclusive of takeout use conditional name and address for the record please I'm pretty sure the gentleman on Arthur Chu's computer was talking, but he's muted. Okay, he did mention that in the chat. Hold on, uh, Arthur. Okay, go ahead. Can you state your name and address? You were muted. Yeah, yes, um, my name is Dermot Doyne. I'm an attorney. I'm here representing Doug George, uh, 
Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, presently, uh, we have a conditional use uh, and we wish to uh, facilitate it with the restaurant. The so what is the proposed restaurant name? Columbia. It's Columbia? Uh, and yeah. is it a rest, what, what, it, it's just, it's a regular restaurant or is it a coffee shop? What is it? It's going to be uh, quite diverse. It's going to be in the morning, there's going to be uh, breakfast. And in the afternoon and the evening, there's going to be uh, pizza and, and beverage. Okay. Um, and, is, and so the name of it is Columbia. Okay. Correct. I'm assuming, does Columbia, the owners of Columbia, have experience doing takeout? Yes, I have. I actually have uh, a restaurant myself. I'm involved uh, in called Penguin Pizza in Mission Hill. I've been in this business for 25 years, actually more so than that. So are you the one who will be running Columbia? I'll be definitely a consultant, and but we have a very experienced team moving in. Uh, we, Do they have experience selective. doing takeout yes. in the city of Boston? They have, and they will be uh, self-serve uh, qualified and tips okay. serve, uh, they will they will they will meet the standard. Okay. Um, does the proposed space have any grates on the front of it? No. No. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Plans are adequate. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good morning, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, this is a new building that recently just went through the Article 80 community process, and that was, this discussion of the restaurant was discussed throughout that process. The applicant has also maintained consistent communication with his abutters and has continued outreach to the McCormick Civic Association. Um, there have been no concerns flagged at this time, and we're excited to see this new restaurant open in the neighborhood. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Julie Ryan from City Council Frank Baker's office. We would also like to go on record in support of this project. Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't have any raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve uh, this applicant only with the usual takeout language. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Following the next case, calling VOA 116 7376, 50 to 52 Dorset Street. This is a change of auction from a two family dwelling to a three family dwelling. Add three accessory Austrian parking spaces to the rear of the yard, accessed by an existing curb cut and driveway. Demo the garage in the rear of the yard. The violations, Article 65, Section 8. The three family is forbidden in the use in use in the 2F 5000 subdistrict. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Morancy. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston. I represent the owner of the property, John Meunier. Uh, Madam Chair, members, this is uh, very simple just in terms of uh, what is being sought from this board, which is a variance for a three-family use in a two-family district. The, uh, my client purchased the property uh, and began renovating it. When he purchased it, there were already three kitchens in there. There have been perhaps as many as four units in over the years. Uh, what he's seeking to do is do a complete gut renovation of the building, uh, establish the legal occupancy as a three-family dwelling. The uh, three units would be a 1,392-square-foot three-bedroom, a 2,330-square-foot three-bedroom, and a 702 square foot one bedroom. Uh, the existing garage in the back, which has not been used over the years for parking, would be demolished, uh, allowing for a minimum of three um, uh, uh, Austri parking spaces in the rear. Uh, the footprint of the building would not be expanded. Uh, my client is not expanding living space into the basement. That will remain a, a functional uh, mechanical basement. Um, the uh, only additions are a small rear balcony off of the second floor level uh, and um, a, a new deck over the roof of the, uh, the second story roof uh, of, uh, of the, uh, the level below for the exclusive use of that smaller uh, one bedroom unit on the third floor. Uh, with that, I'll pause and I'll take any questions that uh, the members may have. 
How are the plans, Mr. Ullick? Uh, the plans are straightforward. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Vandell, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. <clears throat> the applicant notified all his butter, uh, butters and no concerns were raised. The applicant has also reached out uh, and continued outreach to the McCormick Civic Association um, and they supported this proposal. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Julie Ryan from City Council Frank Baker's office. We would like to go on record in support of the project. Thanks. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley from Councilor Sabi George's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve DPD design review. Do they need design review? There's a, the exterior part is in addition, so. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1129048, 1589 Columbus Avenue. This is a change of occupancy by dry cleaner to an adult use retail cannabis store. Interior alterations and exterior renovations. The building remained the same size. No additions of any kind. The violations of Article 55, Section 19, cannabis established use is conditional. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, legal counsel to the applicant, which is KG Collective LLC. And with me on the hearing today is uh, Michael Pyers, one of the co owners, Marcus Johnson Smith, the other co owner, and our architect, Jose Guzman. Um, I'll start off by just indicating that this is in the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood District and a um, sub-district of industrial development area and of course a cannabis retail use is a conditional use and that is the precise release that we're seeking from the board today. Um, I'd like to turn it over to one of the owners, Michael Pyers, who will walk you through the programming and security elements of the proposed uh, cannabis retail store here. Um, do you mind scrolling up to the previous slide, please? Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, actually, up two slides to the main building. Um, just want to take a f that one. Thank you. Get you uh, take a few moments to familiarize you with the building. It's at 1589 Columbus Avenue. We do have a 10 year lease secure. Uh, we believe the site to be compliant. We are more than uh, half a mile from the closest dispensary which is located on Blue Hill Avenue, and we are 700 feet away from the closest grade schools in Nativity Prep. We are state certified economic empowerment applicants, and we also received a recent approval from the Boston Cannabis Board and got our host agreement. And we anticipated opening on uh, late fall, December-ish of this year. Next slide, please. Well, so as the applicant, um, can we go directly into telling us how the facility would work, show us the layout, okay. um, tell us how the facility would work once one entered the okay. door, what yep. your security is, and your hours of operation. Our hours of operation are uh, Monday through Sunday, 11 to 8, as approved by the Boston Cannabis Board. Our entrance will remain on the corner of Amory and Columbus Avenue. We're going to remove the non-compliant uh, ramp there that's currently there and install a wheelchair lift to ensure access to everyone into our establishment. Um, upon uh, arrival, their IDs will be checked by a security agent before entering our vestibule. Our vestibule will act as a queuing area and they'll end, uh, come to this secondary uh, security ID checkpoint where their IDs will be verified to see the legal age to enter into our establishment. We'll have eight point of sale stations. The first one closest to the door will be dedicated for online ordering and express pickup. And the rest of the building is, uh, you know, is it called the uh, back of the house? We'll have a vault where all the product will be stored uh, the, uh, the end of the evening per CCC regulations. And we'll also have a small Kush Group shop with a, which is a duplicate of our current business in Mission Hill. It's just a small cannabis accessory store that will complement the dispensary and also act as an additional queuing area for customers. And so, um, where is, so if an, a person enters by the office, 
Where did they exit? Um, they're not entering by the office. That's just a private door for upper management. Um, the entrance is going to be on the corner of Amory on the bottom left hand side of the screen. Yeah. Okay. And then go into the vestibule into the counter clockwise um, to the clockwise motion. Yeah. Well, when they enter the sales floor, they'll end, uh, exit uh, the same way they came in. Okay. And tell us about your security. Um, the security, if you want to slide down, uh, a, f uh, just a couple of slides down, it's pretty much the same layout. Um, we have ex uh, cameras throughout the building. Um, we have 24-7 third-party monitoring, uh, hold-up alarms behind the point-of-sale stations and also in the vault. We'll have will two you, security... Will you have, will you, I was going to ask, will you have security guards? Yes, yeah. we'll have two security guards on on on. on duty at all times, uh, unarmed security, and we'll have one that will also act as a, you know, a, a customer management at the outside and also in the queuing area if need be. So tell us about how parking will work. So unfortunately, due to the limitations of the, of the lot, there aren't any opportunities for parking, but we have worked out uh, an arrangement with, we are working out an arrangement with our butter to utilize the easement for loading. Um, there is no parking. Um, there's plenty of off of on street parking on Columbus and Amory Street, and we are uh, in discussions with the BTD to try to uh, create uh, two to three short term parking spaces that our customers can use, uh, you know, for for entering our establishment. But we are close to Jackson Square, um, not not even about 500 feet away. Uh, there's three MBTA stops right in front of our building, um, so we're gonna you know subsidize those costs for our employees focus on localized hiring um so you know hopes that employees won't have to use any of the parking spaces and leave those for customers so i think it's the home for little wanderers is that who's going to have their daycare or is it horizons i forget um, who's going to have their daycare center down the street um have you have you been in touch with them um yes horizons attended um, one of our community meetings and then we my partner and i also met with them privately Okay. And their concerns were relative to queuing outside, but we walked them through our security plan and then our queue, uh, cust uh, traffic management plan, and um, they seemed to be, they didn't have any other concerns beyond that. So tell us how your queuing is going to be managed. So as I mentioned, there'll be a, a security guard at the door. Um, he's going to manage customers in the queuing in the vestibule. Uh, if you want to go back to the floor plan, um, our vestibule area can house, you know, several customers and then if we ever have times of uh you know high demand we can also put customers inside of our kush group shop and they can you know look at some of our accessories while they wait uh to get gain entrance into the dispensary sales floor how are the plans mr alec uh the plans are straightforward any questions from the board yeah if uh the applicant mentioned that the the nearest establishment was on blue hill ave isn't there a closer one located in um, on Center Street? Um, there's one on Jamaica Plain called Seed that recently opened. They're about the same distance, but they're they're both um, way over the half mile buffer requirement. Can we go back to the slide that shows that buffer? Because there um, are there playgrounds within the. Uh, there is the playground. Well, uh, it's, all the way to the top. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, yeah there's a playground uh, behind. Marcella. Yeah, Marcella. But uh, is it a play? Is it a playground? I can't remember. It's a baseball field. Yeah. And then uh, did um, the BPDA board just? Um, approve the complete renovation of ha of Mildred Haley. So there's a lot of activity happening right at this corner. Um, does, that, that, does that respond to your question, Mr. Ligris? It does, yeah. So the, the, the seed location is definitely closer. I, I can't tell from this map whether it's within the half it's, um, it is, it is, because it's okay. by, I, I think they changed the name to either Four Corners or Five Corners. It's by the ASPCA. Yeah, okay. So, um, any other questions from the board? 
Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Carpenter from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Two communities, two community meetings were held for this proposal on November 17th, 2020, as well as December 28th, 2020. The applicant has worked with multiple community groups and civic associations throughout Roxbury and Jamaica Plain. There were concerns regarding parking and traffic, but we believe the applicants have worked with the city and the community to address those concerns. The Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council has voted in support of this proposal. Therefore, the mayor's office uh, would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Justin McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. I would also like to stress the amount of community meetings that this group has had, both with the business community and with various civic associations, all of which received overwhelming support from neighbors. Uh, the council would like to go on record in support. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Council Sabi George's office, would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand. Carolyn? Carolyn, can you say your name and address, please? Uh, hi, my name is Carolyn Royce, 19 Olmstead Street, Jamaica Plain. Uh, I'm speaking for Eggleston Square Neighborhood Association. We had a number of meetings with KG Collective, found them very responsive to our concerns. Uh, we believe we'll have ongoing good communication and discussions with them. Uh, we had confirmation from Boston Transportation Department they would help with allocating two short-term parking spaces and also locate some bike parking. Uh, the, the area is going to go through a lot of construction and development, so there'll be continuing needs to uh, look at the parking and pedestrian access. Uh, but we believe there's a good relationship with KG, and we are not opposed uh, to this variance. Madam Chair, I have no additional raised hands. May I have a motion? Madam Chair, I just, I just have one question, Madam Chair. Have you had any conversations? I know Tim Detox is right there. Have you had any conversations with them about, I mean, this power? I mean, just didn't know if you had any conversations. So, um, they attended our, our first community meeting, and we reached out to them to have a private meeting, but they were having a change in management, and we're waiting for them to follow up in regards to having a meeting. Um, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve with... Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Go ahead. Uh, are we doing design review on this applicant only? Yeah, if it's not if design have... review for signage, and yes. Is, is, is there a second? Second. Was Joe, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I oppose. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Thank Madam you. Chair, it's now 12.38. I'm going to call. Are there any 12.30 cases that are going to be deferred or withdrawn? If you can give me the address, please. Uh, Mr. Fortune, I have one. 142 okay. P Street. P is in Paul. Yep. For the record, calling BOA 112-1328, 142 P Street. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston, attorney for the applicant at 142 P Street. Um, we are requesting a deferral at this time. We thought we were ready to go today, but we've been requested by the mayor's office and Councillor Flynn's office to have another a butter meeting to iron out a few more details on this one. So we would ask for deferral. So I just want to give you a heads up like we've been giving everybody else a heads up that you know we are not keen on too many deferrals it's it wastes our time in certain ways if you don't have your act together so um just try and make sure that everything gets uh, sorted out before your next appearance before us may I, have a motion? Chair. may I have a motion motion to defer is there a second second all those in favor aye any opposed the date, please. We'll have a date of June 22nd at 12.30. Madam Chair, I'm going to have to stay on this phone. I need to check the uh, owner of this. Well, um, I'm, I'm okay if you uh, recuse yourself for now because it's just a deferral. Yeah, just recuse okay. me. Thank you. So, yes, for the record, uh, Mr. Ligris is recused. 
Thank you, and that was June 22, Mr. Fortune? That's correct, Mr. LaCasse. June Thank 22nd you. at 1230. 1230, thank you so much. Welcome. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? Uh, yes, Mr. Um, Fortune, um, we have Attorney John Fulgini, 35 and 39 Avalon Road, BOA 109. Okay, for the record, I guess that, Mr. Fulgini. For the record, calling BOA 1098890, 35 Avalon Road. There's also a companion case, BOA 1746923, 39 Avalon Road. Name and address for the record, please. Attorney John Fulgini, 10 Forbes Road in Braintree. Uh, Ms. Bulgini, is this your second uh, request for a deferral? It is, Madam Chair. After we um, came before you before, we had made some several uh, reductions in the size of this single family home. And we heard from uh, the counselor's office today that they were opposing requesting for, uh, further community um, dialogue as well as with the mayor's office of neighborhood services so okay so let's let's give you a date so you have enough time so you're before us um with a with a live case okay thank you may i have a motion please motion is second. there a second all those in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed the date please you can do a date of july 13th at 12:30. thank you mr fortune thank you everybody Welcome. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? Hearing none, I'll go to that. Is there any other deferrals or withdrawals for 1230? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll go back to the next two cases. Calling BOA 1156475 Savin Hill Avenue. There's a companion case BOA 1156470 1121 Dorchester Avenue. This is for 31 Savin Hill Avenue, direct a new three story, three family building as part of a larger development at 1121 Dorchester Avenue. The violation of Article 65, Section 41, our street parking is insufficient. Article 65, Section 42, 42.14, two or more buildings on the same lot. Article 65, section nine, the floor area is excessive. Article 65, section nine, the usable open space is insufficient. And Article 65, section nine, the side yard is insufficient. This is for 1121 Dorchester Avenue, demolish two small industrial buildings and one single family. Combine the two lots, erect a new five-story mixed-use building and a three-story residential building. The project is comprised of commercial space on the ground level as well as office space on the second level with residential above. The violation is Article 65, Section 15. The MFR in the is a conditional use in an LC sub-district. Article 65, Section 15. Restaurant is a conditional use in an LC sub-district. Article 65, Section 16. The building height and feet is excessive. Article 65, Section 16. The usable open space is insufficient. Article 65, Section 16, the rear yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 16, the Floyd air ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 41, our street parking is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 42, 42.142 or more buildings on the same lot. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is George Moranski. I'm an attorney with the business address of 350 West Broadway in South Boston, representing Joey Arcari. Uh, also joined by Michael Delafabe of Rode Architects uh, at today's hearing. Madam Chair, members, this is an Article 80 small project which was approved by the BRA Board of Directors on March 11th this year. The site is 12,029 square feet and consists of two combined parcels at 1121 Dorchester Avenue and at 31 Savin Hill Avenue. The proposed project consists of a four-story building containing 21 dwelling units with a ground floor restaurant on the Dorchester side of the site, the Dorchester Avenue side of the site, in a three-story building with three dwelling units at 31 Savin Hill Avenue, uh, the rear of the site or the front, obviously, is viewed from Savin Hill Avenue. The uh, initially proposed office space has been eliminated. Uh, this had originally been a five-story building. It is now a four-story building. Uh, it will be a rental project and would provide four IDP units. The site is located within a local convenience zoning subdistrict under Article 65 
of the zoning code uh, bordering a 3F residential subdistrict and requires relief for the multifamily use and the restaurant use, both of which are conditional. As so, well Mr. Variances. Lorenzi, so, Mr. Lorenzi, it looks like um, the easy thing is to do Salmon Hill Ave because it's in context. <coughs> Because I, from the layout, I see how, how the parking in, is going to work. But can mm -hmm. you talk us about, about Seven Hill Ave? Sure, Project. Seven Hill is, is, a, is a, there's currently a single family dwelling there, two and a half stories. Uh, it would be replaced by a three story building, um, which, uh, you know, zoning compliant height. The existing building there uh, has zero setback on the right side. This, this uh, would have um a uh, uh a three foot setback from the lot line meaning 10 feet from the building the residential building to the right so that view from rear of the three family obviously you know what that is showing is so that the entirety of the building can be seen it's not showing uh, the building on the lot to the right uh, but that's what i'm referring to that there is an additional setback there so that's three units in a 35 foot tall uh building uh, on, they, on that they, side of the site sorry how many bedrooms uh, these are, um, pardon me, I have it here, uh, later on in my presentation. So, um, uh, there are two bedroom units of approximately 1,245 square feet. Okay. And no roof decks. No. no roof okay. Decks. So let's talk about Dorchester Ave then. Certainly. So, uh, as I said, uh, we're, uh, uh, additional variance is required for, the building height of the main building, usable open space, the rear yard setback, the FAR, uh, and, and the parking, um, as well, of course, as for two buildings on one lot. It's an L-shaped lot. It's currently the site of an automotive use. With respect to zoning, as I mentioned, it's in an LC bordering on a 3F district. It is, it is within plan uh, Glover's Corner, the uh, ongoing BPDA planning study, and it complies with all of the use and dimensional requirements of that plan. The 1121 Dorchester Avenue building will consist of a 5,030 square foot ground floor restaurant space. Floors two to four will consist of 21 dwelling units. There'll be 15 one bedroom units, three one plus bedroom units, and three three bedroom units. The um, all ranging size from 765 square feet for three of the one bedrooms, uh, but all other units range from 830 to 1,095 square feet. There'll be 13 below grade parking spaces. Uh, the chair pointed out that she sees that the access is in fact from the Savin Hill Avenue side of the site and that is correct. Uh, and there'll be 26 bicycle parking spaces. The project was designed with great attention to the setbacks uh, with uh, uh, generous green space areas at the rear of the site, including on the right side of 31 Savin Hill Avenue, uh, adjacent to the nearest residential abutter. And there'd also be a significant setback in front of the building where the restaurant is located with planters. Um, with that, I'll, I'll pause. I'll take any, any questions that board members may have. And I'm assuming again, no roof deck on Dorchester Ave? No, there's no activated roof on the building. Uh, there is because there is an elevator and an elevator penthouse. Uh, uh, there would be both, you know, there would be stair access to the roof, uh, but uh, the access way uh, in, in the penthouse is or would be the minimum size necessary to achieve the objective of accessing the roof for servicing mechanical units in the elevator. And the uh, parking, the 13 below grade spaces, are they going to be shared between the restaurant use and the residential use, or is it dedicated to residential use? Dedicated to, to residential, Madam Chair. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? No, the drawings are fine. Any questions from the board? <clears throat> is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Fandel, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record in support of this proposal. It went through a full Article 80 community process with the neighborhood, and the applicants have also continued outreach to the Columbia Savin Hill Civic Association as well as Butters. Um, we're very excited about this density increase in this area. As the councillor noted, this is in the Glover's corner planning study area. Um, and with that, we'd like to go on record in support. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Julie Ryan from City Council, Frank Baker's office. We would like to um, echo the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, Patrick Randell's sentiments, and go on record in support. 
Good Karen afternoon, Tim. Go ahead, it's Karen. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Asabi George's office. I'd like to go on record in support. Thanks, Paul. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Council would like to go on record and support, uh, knowing that this will be that this will be bring needed housing, um, as well as a high quality restaurant, and the proponent has done uh, top notch work uh, work in the past. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have letters of support and letters of opposition. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Uh, Mr. Morenci, do you have a restaurant in mind? Um, I. I, I believe my client, Mr. Arkari, is online. I don't know uh, if he has an answer for that. Um, uh, do you mean a, ty a type of restaurant, uh, Madam Chair? Um, it, no, it, it really doesn't matter because then if you're doing takeout, we'll see you. Okay. Uh, given this information, may I have a motion, please? Motion to approve the media design review. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Calling the last case for 11 o'clock, calling DOA 116 3038 44 to 46 Soldiers Field Place. This is a constructed new six story building of approximately 101,000 gross square feet, consisting of 102 residential units and small restaurant with takeout of approximately 870 square feet on a 62 on site parking and 62 on site parking spaces. The violations, Article 29, Section 4, this is the GPOD applicability. Article 51, Section 16, the multifamily, 102 units is conditional. Article 51, Section 17, the four day ratio is, is excessive. Article 51, Section 17, the front yard is insufficient. Article 51, Section 17, the building height is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Second, I believe there. Okay. Hi, Kevin. You've been unmuted. Are you here for this case? Uh, yes. Good afternoon. I am actually here in opposition to the uh, relief oh. side. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Yes, it might be Nick Zazula. What's the name? Nick Zazula. Nick. Do you see him in the attendees? I don't see him, Nick. He's a panelist. He's a panelist. Okay, Nick, you've been unmuted. Can you hear us? Hi, Nick. Hi. Do we have an applicant, a representative of an applicant here or not? This is <clears throat> this is Eric Howler. I'm the architect. I think Nick is our attorney. Okay. I think um, I'm not sure why he's not on. He should be um, available. He's on. He may not. He may have some connectivity issues, but he is on. Oh, Nick or Joe Hanley? They're saying it may be Joe Hanley. Give me a second. I, Joe, can you hear us? Are you, can you speak to this case or you've been unmuted? No, we, Joe, we can't hear you. I see your, your message in the chat. We cannot hear you. So let's go ahead to the next case while Mr. Hanley and team work out their concerns. Delivery discussions. Case BOA 999 494 Six Mount Vernon Avenue. This is a constructed new dormer on the rear of the house with the roof deck, access to a roof, roof deck from new stair and hatch. Violations Article 9, Section 1, extension of a non conforming height. Article 62, Section 25, roof structure restrictions of dormer. And Article 62, Section 8, insufficient rear yard setback. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Timothy Burke. My business address is 142 Berkeley Street in Boston, and I'm representing 
the owners, David Lewis and Jen Sulu Lewis. Tell us what's being proposed, Mr. Burke. Yes, the, um, my clients have uh, purchased this house. It was a two family. They've converted it to a single family and have undertaken a renovation of it. As part of the work, they would like permission to add a dormer onto the rear of the house and to have a deck on top of that dormer. The, um, that's where the um, violet, uh, zoning relief that we need. We work pretty closely or very closely with the people behind us who ended up supporting it. And we've also worked with the uh, Charlestown Preservation Society and other neighbors to remove a skylight that was on the front roof, which they objected to. And so we have removed that. And we're, um, we're still happy to work with the neighbors, but although that wasn't part of the variance, they were very concerned with that. So we, we listened sorry. carefully. Why will you defer the last time? That was some time to work out things with uh, Charlestown's preservation and the uh, abutters, yes. How were the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Uh, the plans are uh, pretty interesting. The, Mr. Burke, the cupola is, is existing, right? Yes, that is correct, yeah. And we've, um, we've set the deck in and the dormer in from both sides and actually lowered it to minimize any visibility. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I recall this because it's pretty unusual to see a cupola like that. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful and, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, I see that, that you've reduced the dimensions. So, yeah, the, the drawings are fine. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Coppinger with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We'd like to go on record and support this proposal. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have letters of support and opposition. Okay. Miss um, um, Ambassador, any raised hands? There is a raised hand from Kevin, but I believe you're uh, Kevin, you're here for a different project, correct? I am. Okay, thank you. Can you just lower your hand until they call that case again? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Um, well, I, I guess uh, motion to approve. Um, Jeff, is this BPD a designer view or is this Charlestown? <laughs> no, we always handle the ones in Charlestown. Okay, uh, BPD a designer view. Thank you. Oh, is there a second? Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much. Calling your next case, calling BOA 115 2882 9 Eden Street. Just to confirm, Oxley is a two family, change Oxley to a three family dwelling, rebuild the rear elevation to add additional space to the rear of the structure to convert from a two family to a three family, build a driveway to access parking in the rear of the property. Violations of Article 62, Section 62-25, Roof Structure Restricted District. Article 62, Section 8, the side yard setback is insufficient. Article 62, Section 8, the usable open space is insufficient. And Article 62, Section 30, side yard with driveway cannot be less than 10 feet wide. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney John. Um, my name is Timothy Burke. I'm the architect for the project. My business address is 142 Berkeley Street in Boston. And um, I know that John Polgini is the attorney for this. Can you just talk us through, since you have the mic, um, yes. what this would mean from a two to a three? Is uh, What's the size? How, how is this conversion happening? The, um, the uh, addition would be on the back of the L. Uh, we would be adding a third story. It's a two-story L now. The front half of the, the front part of the building is a, a brick three-story structure. And the, we would create three units that would be uh, the first unit on the first level would also include some space in the basement. That would be 1,460 square feet. It would have four bedrooms and three and a half baths. The uh, second yes. floor would be um, 1,590 square feet. I would have three bedrooms, two and a half baths. And the third unit would be 1,670 square feet, would be three bedrooms and two and a half baths. 
So the, for the first unit, uh, tell us about the basement occupancy, the floor to ceiling height, and if there are any bedrooms proposed in that basement. Yes, it, um, it would be two more sheets. I'll show you the plan, but there's one bedroom in there. It's mostly a family room that's proposed. Um, you can see it now on your screen. The uh, height is seven foot nine in this basement. The front half is devoted to the mechanical services for the entire building and storage for the upper units. So the, uh, the uh, living space is really just the new part in the back that we're doing. Mr. Alec, how are the plans? Um, well, they're as described, except, but he uh, failed to mention that the basement to grade uh, is five foot five inches, which is really uh, makes it has a feel of being underground. And so I think we would, based on our the board's uh, practice, I don't think we would want to see a, be a bedroom in that basement. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, Mr. Uh, D'Amico has spoke on this from BTD. Just want to put it in for the record regarding 9 Eden Street. The street is... I'm we're, Okay, go ahead. The street at this location is very narrow and there is parking on the side of the street. Also, there is a street light directly in front of the site where the driveway is planned to be located. Finally, the driveway is only eight and a half feet in width, which is much too small for a vehicle to traverse safely in any direction. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Joe Carpenter with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We would like to go on record in support of this proposal. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Madam Chair, members of the board, Ricardo Patron from the Office of City Councilor Lydia Edwards. The council would also like to go on the record in support and would like to ask the applicant to continue working with their abutters on the privacy concerns regarding the roof. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Anissa Wasabi George's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I have a request um, for Robert to speak on this. Robert, can you state your name and address, please? Yes, uh, Robert Morrison, 11 Eden Street in Charlestown, uh, next door to and uh, back directly attached to 9 Eden Street. Uh, I just want to say thanks for considering our several reasons for opposing the roof deck including uh, the privacy issue, uh, as well as a request of the board to make sure that all appropriate safety precautions be taken with respect to the driveway design. Uh, we've communicated so with I, the board. Uh, so you're in support of this proposal? No, I'm in opposition specifically to the roof deck. So you're in opposition to the roof deck. Okay, yes, anything yes. else that you're in opposition to? Uh, no, we just have concern that all safety precautions be included if the driveway is approved. Okay, thank you. Because of how Thank Madam, you. Got it. Madam Chair, Secretary here. Um, we do have letters of support, and we did we did have the one letter of opposition. That was Mr. Morrison who just spoke. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's just see. Um, Mr. Burke, can you talk through us again through that driveway? Yes, the, uh, the eight and a half foot uh, constriction is about one third into the uh, site. So it's where the other building at number uh, seven, Eden Street comes up, up to the property line. So it is a little narrow at that one section, but then it opens up quite nicely in the back where the parking is. We've um, added a, um, a rumble strip at the before the street so that any cars coming out would have a warning to be uh, careful about pulling out. And we are aware of that the, uh, we'd have to pay for the, having the light pole relocated where the driveway entrances but talking to the neighbors we heard you know that parking is difficult and that by us providing these five spots uh, one and a half is required here but uh, by having five spots the uh, we would help relieve the the on-street parking that's uh, stressed um, <laughs> would it be possible to see the site plan because i'm a little confused as how it, it, you got an eight, eight and a half feet um, you're, you're describing, and I'm just relying on your words. Now, let, let's go to, here it is here. The, um, this is the, you can see where the two buildings come together. That's the tightest point. I think that first drawing was the best. The uh, site, yes, that one there. 
So that's right at that corner. These buildings are at an angle, so that's where the constriction is. But then okay. you just back our addition to get ten feet. Uh, if yeah, you but, but, that point. but you've got but you've got eight and a half feet from the uh, sidewalk all the way to the back of the building before you are expanding it, right? It it is a little wider at the street. That's at an angle, so those the. The line is not quite parallel, but yeah, it's a it's a narrow drive. We feel that um, you know it's going to encourage people to have smaller cars, which is a great thing. <laughs> and um, that the use of a residential parking is fairly minimal. It's the lowest uh, frequency of use that we see, so we don't expect there to be a lot of travel through there. And eight and a half is wide as a normal parking space in a parking lot, so most people are used to that. Well, eight and a half is the standard on, on the parking space. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you're not going to get a stretch limo in there, that's for sure. <laughs> no, we hope not, yes. And can you show us the roof deck, please, Ms. Edwards? In regards to the roof deck, we did work with the neighbor, uh, Mr. Morrison, and we originally had it back on the L, so we shifted it forward. Um, Two more plans, and here we are. So we shifted the entire deck forward, and we also reduced the size quite a bit. I um, I feel that we weren't we were sighted incorrectly because we've kept this deck to below 35 feet. It's accessed by a hatch, and it's less than one foot above the high point of the roof. So it um, we asked the reviewer about that, and we never got an answer. So. Okay. Okay, so given all that information, may I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve a BPDA design review and a BTD review for the driveway and access in and out and sensors and... Perfect. Well, okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you very much. Madam Chair, I'm going to go back to Soldiers Field Road. I believe they're on. Hello, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? We can. I'm going to call that to the record, Mr. Hanley. Hold on two seconds. Yes, sir. Thank you. Case BOA 1163038, 44-46 Soldiers Field Place. <clears throat> this is a constructed new six-story building, approximately 101,000 gross square feet, consisting of 102 residential units, a small restaurant with takeout, and approximately 870 square feet of 62 on-site parking space. Violations Article 29, Section 4, this is GPOD applicability. Article 51, Section 16, a multi-family use is conditional. Multi, I'm sorry, 102 units. Multi, uh, Article 51, Section 17, the Floyd area ratio is excessive. <coughs> Article 51, Section 17, front yards insufficient. And Article 51, Section 17, the building height is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Mr. Secretary, members of the board, Attorney Joe Hanley, 28 State Street in Boston, uh, representing the applicant developer, Stephen Ballas from 1500 SFR LLC, who's with us. Also with us is Eric Howler, who's the principal architect of the project from Howler and you. Um, Madam Chair, just briefly, uh, the site is about 26,000 gross square feet of land. It's located on the west northwestern edge of Brighton uh, towards the Charles River uh, Recreation Area and the Watertown-Newton lines. Um, the client has uh, been approved by Article 80 Large Project Review on January 14th through the BPDA's process for a six-story, 102-unit residential development um, at this site. Uh, it would include 62 parking spaces, as well as a, a new funding for a new blue bike station and a small ground floor retail cafe. Um, as you'll see in the presentation, the uh, bedroom counts are five three bedroom units, which are 1,137 square feet, 16 two bedroom units between 924 and 1,224 square feet, so large two-bedroom units, 55 one-bedrooms that are up to 897 square feet, and 26 studios. 55 of the units have their own balconies, and the building what, what, has been... What, I'm sorry, what are the sizes of the studios? 
Uh, the studios are between 563 square feet all the way up to 676. So this is not a compact project at all. These are generously sized. Even the one bedroom units uh, go up to almost 900 square feet. Um, and as I mentioned, 55 of them have their own balconies and there's also a roof deck on the top overlooking uh, across the Charles uh, River. We uh, have a inclusionary development uh, program here that exceeds the requirements for providing 17% of affordable instead of the 13%. What that means, Madam Chair, is that we have 17 units that are income restricted on a range of 50% uh, percent AMI all the way up to 90% AMI. One of those is a three bedroom unit that would be income restricted at 90% of AMI intended to capture uh, what this board has talked about, um, family style housing and the like, which was a big part of our discussion with the community. With respect to the zoning, we need relief in four areas. We need a conditional use permit for the residential, uh, which is appropriate this location that is now beginning to connect to Boston Landing with some infrastructure improvements that we are also providing. Um, the FAR required is one, our contemplated FAR is 3.87, height is 35, we are 69.2, but that of course varies throughout the design. Um, this is a through lot as well, Madam Chair, so the front yard requirement is seven. Uh, in a through lot, you obviously have two front yards, one being Soldiers Field Road, the other being Soldiers Field Place, uh, which would be the back, so we are um, nearly compliant at the true front, which is six feet uh, and seven inches back. I would also note that we exceed the open space requirement as a result of the process. Um, you'll see on the ground floor, we're creating a new pedestrian path to provide access to this emerging area of the neighborhood. Um, total square footage is 5,983 of usable open space uh, for a requirement of 5,100. Um, Mr. Hanley, sure. Stanley, can you talk through the parking? Um, yes. Ms. Edwards, can you yes. just show us how the parking layout is proposed? So um, 62 spaces, this is a, um, a, a rental building. We also uh, have a fully compliant um, bicycle storage and repair area uh, as required under the new um, guidelines. The 62 parking spaces are all unbundled, Madam Chair, meaning they're open, um, they're not designated per unit. Uh, we're, we're also at a location, um, you're familiar with this neighborhood, it is don't, a don't little talk bit- about, Don't talk about public transportation, we just yep. want to know about what's going on here. Yeah, so okay. that, that's a big part of the parking, right? Um, we had, had a robust discussion with both neighborhood groups and the IAG, some folks thinking we needed more some folks wanting a little less. We think we ended up in a place so that, that earned everyone's support. Um, uh, is there um, any, um, I know the concern in a lot of neighborhoods now is graduate student and graduate student housing. Is there any way that you've responded to that? It's not, it was never brought up in the entire year of discussion. It's not something that is contemplated. Mr. Ballas is a uh, residential home ownership and uh, apartment developer in Alston Brighton. Uh, we don't see that as, as being part of this, um, uh, necessarily this market where it is. Um, again, we've, we've designed this housing program in a way that we're delivering um, we're exceeding affordability requirements. We're providing family size units, and even the one and two bedroom units are very vast in size. Okay. This okay. is an out. Hold an out, on, out Mr. Hanley, okay. hold on. Yep. Mr. Hanley, yep. don't. Um, Mr. Ehrlich, how are the plans? Uh, the plans are good. Uh, it's, um, um, and the affordability is good. I, one, this is not a zoning question. I'm just curious as to why the design has that sort of step back features where there's less frontage on the uh, on Soldiers Field and more on the rear. What, what, what was that? Was that in, in response to community request or how that happened? Yeah, so uh, I can let uh, Mr. Howler speak to it, but it's so that uh, the maximum amount of units have air and light 
um, and access and uh, to um, the Charles River and uh, the area. So maybe you want to speak to that, Eric, just quickly. Eric Howler sure. from Howler and yeah, hi, Eric Heller. Thanks for the comment. Uh, we shaped the building as a prow to give 80% of the units views of the Charles. So it's a unique site. Uh, the Charles is a great amenity. We thought everyone living here would want uh, a view of the Charles. So the serrated edges sort of step back, allowing everyone to have an oblique view of the Charles. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. I'd like to go on record and support of this proposal. As you heard from the applicant, um, they've made tremendous work with the IAG group, the Civic Association during the BPDA process. Uh, the deep affordability is something that is crucially needed in the Alston Brighton neighborhood. Um, and the fact that 17% of the units will be income restricted, we think is, is fantastic. Um, they've also made public realm improvements to that area as well. I think we're going to continue to see more changes in that particular part of Brighton um, as it becomes more residential and has easier access to the Charles River. Um, Mike Sinatra is on as well. He can speak no, to the I'm, not, I'm not, not interested in hearing from the BPDA because we already understood from the attorney it's been through the process and approved. Are there any other elected officials on this call? Good afternoon. This is Maura McCray from Councillor Breeden's office. I'd like to go on record as uh, Councillor Breeden would like to go on record as being in support of this project. As Connor mentioned, we appreciate the um, high level of affordability included in this project and also the range of AMIs included in the units. Uh, I'd also just like to mention that this, as Connor also mentioned, this area will be increasingly connected to the rest of the neighborhood. It has been sort of disconnected just based on the streets, but we are going to see a number of improvements um, in terms of connectivity and uh, there will be huge changes on Leo Birmingham Parkway. So we are looking forward to that too in, in working with this development. Thanks. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand by Anthony. Anthony, can you state your name and address, please? Yes, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tony Disidoro representing the Austin Civic Association. would like to echo the, uh, the opinions of those who have spoken in favor of this project. Uh, the affordability for our association was uh, very appealing, and we respect the uh, reasonable and appropriateness of the height of the building as well, given its uh, close proximity to the Charles River. So we have approved this project with our usual proviso uh, that uh, uh, short-term rentals and or undergraduate student housing be prohibited. Thank you. Okay, we also have Annabella. Annabella, can you unmute yourself? I'm Chair, members of the board, Annabelle Gomes from the Brighton Austin Improvement Association. We'd like to go on record and support. We support the affordability at 17% and the size of the units, having some family-friendly units there, and also uh, converting that area to a residential area. Thank you. I also have a caller in from 617-307. Caller, are you here for this case? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is representing the Carpenters Union. On behalf of hundreds of our residents who want to go on record and support, uh, also kudos to the uh, developer for a great civic engagement. Thank you. Thank you. And then lastly, Kevin McRoy, can you state your name and address, please? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Kevin McRoy, I'm a lawyer from Fall River, 38 Rock Street, Suite 1 in Fall River, and I represent uh, the residences at 1550 Soldiers Field Road Limited Partnership and the residences at Soldier Field Place Condominium Limited Partnership. Uh, the, the objection is is that the relief sought really doesn't comply with, with any of the requirements of the Boston Zoning Code or um, 40A. Uh, there are no special circumstances that are applicable to this property that are not present in the entire neighborhood. None have been shown. Uh, this simply appears to be an effort to, to maximize profits, which is understandable, but that's so not- So hold on, hold on, Mr. McRoy. 
Um, are they? Uh, are you representing uh, residents from new developments? I represent the owners of uh, two properties nearby that have developments under construction. Yes. Okay. So, did they did they benefit from relief from this board? That I cannot say. Uh, I understand that they uh, acquired the properties after uh, any approvals were in hand. Okay, purpose. so they did. So they did benefit from the relief, whether they they personally uh, sought them or they purchased them. Okay, thank you for uh, for putting on the record the opposition for the for the two representative uh, condo developments. Given that information, may I have a motion, please? Make a motion to approve with BPDA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Only the next two cases calling BOA 113 1644 97 William Street. There is a companion case BOA 111 67199 William Street. This is the 97. Subdividing 680 square feet of land from 97 to 99 William Street. The violations, Article 55, Section 9, lot size requirements insufficient to support the existing building due to the subdivision. Article 55, Section 9, the Floyd ratio is excessive due to the subdivision. Article 55, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient due to the subdivision. Article 55, Section 9, the rear yard setback requirement is insufficient. This is for 99 Williams. Erecting new six unit residential building on two combined vacant lots. The violation of Article 55, Section 40, off street parking is insufficient. Article 55, Section 8, a multi family dwelling unit six is, for, is forbidden. Article 55, Section 9, the lot area for additional dwelling units insufficient. Article 55, Section 9, the Floyd area ratio is excessive. And Article 55, Section 9, the side yard setback is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Should be Joseph Federico. Let me just. I, I'm sorry about that. I had it on mute. Oh, okay. Hi, hi, Madam Chair and fellow board members. This is Joe Federico of business address 215 Norfolk Avenue in Roxbury. Um, I believe Elaine Scales, the architect, is on right now, which she's going to walk you through um, the proposed development on the site. Is Elaine added as a panel member? Elaine, yeah, let me check. Elaine Scales? I'm still muted. Okay, go ahead, Elaine, you're all set. Oh, oh great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes. Um, can, can you pick up your pace, please, uh, and describe to us what's happening? I understand that at 97, um, 97 Williams Street, you're, you're essentially creating a um, a smaller lot, you're taking 680 square feet from it. How many units are there at 97? There are three at 97. There's three units, and then tell us about what's being proposed at 99. Um, at 99, we're proposing a six unit building. Um, there are, there's one two bedroom unit, and that's 900 square feet. And there are five three bedroom units that are about 1,300 or 1,400 square feet. Um, the, Joe is, we're proposing to combine the two lots to create this sixth family building. Um, one of the ideas there is that the, the building will be more energy efficient due to the fact that we have um, less perimeter. So we're taking the typical so, can, oh, let's just hold on. Uh, what is the zoning district here? It, the zoning is three family, 4,000 square feet. And how many square feet is this uh, 99 Williams? It's um, 8,990 square feet. Okay, and then tell us about parking. So we have three, we're parking is coming off of Stedman Street on a, on a new driveway. There are three interior spaces and two surface spaces. So we were one space short for 99 Williams. 
five parking spaces for six units. And are you proposing a roof deck? We're proposing two roof decks that would have exclusive access from the top floor units by stairs up from the top floor units. And it looks like you have a garage in the rear? Yes, a three-car garage in the rear. And any of these units, is this, a, is this an elevator building? No, it isn't, but the front and rear entries are handicap accessible, and the first floor units have accessible features according to group one, where they're accessible features for bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchens. And the site is relatively flat. Okay. Okay. Uh, how are the plans, uh, Mr. Ehrlich? Plans are okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Joe Carpenter from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And a butters meeting for this proposal was held on September 23rd, 2020. The applicant has been working with the local civic association since February 2020 around this proposal. The Mayor's Office believes that the applicant has worked closely with the community to address the concerns surrounding this proposal. Uh, the applicant also has received the support from the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council. Therefore, the Mayor's Office would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Justin McClary from City Councilor Matt O'Malley's office. Uh, the council would also like to go on record in support of this proposal. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Madam Chair, members of the board, Karen Foley, Councilor Sabi George's office. We'd like to go on record in support. Thank you. Hey, and Madam Chair, I do have a few raised hands. Um, Peter, we can start with you. Can you state your name and address, please? Pete Fraudholtz, 109 William Street. I'm in a butter. I was part of the subcommittee that worked with the developer on this, and um, unlike other projects in the neighborhood, we really weren't able to reach a, a viable consensus. As you've already um, inquired, this building is way too big for this space. Um, it's not appropriate for the zoning. Um, um, the FAR is, what, 74% above what should be required. Uh, the setbacks are completely inadequate, and um, there, there really isn't consideration here for the abutters on a number of different levels, um, including, you know, maintaining the, um, the tree canopy along the property lines that would provide some buffer and privacy, essentially. You know, we have bathroom windows that will be looking onto this project that would be completely exposed. So. Um, for um, for all of these reasons, the subcommittee and the SNA voted to um, not uh, um, support this proposal, and I go along with those decisions. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary here, before anybody else speaks, uh, we do have two letters of support, but numerous opposition letters. Um, Mr. Fortune, what's the opposition letters based on? Is there anything that, that surfaces uh, through those letters? Uh, <laughs> six unit structure. So the size, basically? It looks like it. Okay. Canopy. Okay. A whole bunch let's, of different. Okay. Um, let's go ahead then. Um, Do you want me to keep? So that we have, um, let's see, anybody else, uh, anybody else to speak? Mr. Uh, Ms. Ambassador, did you get everybody? Um, not yet. I have uh, three more hands raised. Um, Ruth, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Thank you. This is Ruth Page. I live at 12 Stedman Street. I'm a direct abutter to this proposal. I'm also a member of the subcommittee of the Stony Brook Neighborhood Association that attempted to negotiate with Mr. Federico through most of, Mar uh, through most of 2020. 
uh, the subcommittee was not able to come to an agreement and the SMA membership voted overwhelmingly to oppose this proposal on the grounds of excessive massing, um, excessive FAR, and um, preservation of our 3F 4000 district. There's no reason why this developer couldn't put two triple deckers on these two lots. Uh, we also are concerned about the driveway and how much property is being taken away from 97 William Street, which is a, uh, a building of um, renters. And essentially their, their backyard will be completely gone to make way for the uh, driveway for this property. Uh, the driveway is dumping out onto Stedman Street, which is a very narrow street that has a city of uh, Boston top map two uh, doorways down from where this driveway will, will empty out. So we're proposing that they build two triple deckers with a driveway that empties onto William Street. Thank you. Okay, and Je Jennifer, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Hi, my name is Jennifer Erhe, and I live at 47 Rossmore Road, um, which is within about 200 feet of this property. Um, I also oppose this project. I support um, the Stony Brook Neighborhood Association's vote uh, against this project, uh, mainly because the developer is asking for a huge number of variances uh, to build a, a grossly oversized building here. It's proposed to be 63 foot wide, um, which is very big. Uh, and it is not the equivalent of, you know, two triple deckers being joined by a central hallway. Uh, it's more like two humongous triple deckers plus a center hallway. Um, so it's just, it's really too big for the site. Um, the same architect has done a great job proposing, uh, sorry, designing an equivalent project right around the corner that the ZBA recently approved at 34, 36 Rossmore. Same lot size, two triple deckers with a shared uh, driveway in between. That kind of proposal is a lot more appropriate for this lot. There's nothing unusual about this lot. There's no hardship. There's no difficult condition here that prevents him from building something that is more appropriately sized and scale for this. The Thank, only you. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Ambassador, that, does that take care of everybody? There's one additional hand raised. Um, okay, let's hear from that person. Okay, Jason, you've been unmuted. Yes, uh, this is Jason Libby, and I live at 97 William Street, the first floor. Yes, yes. go ahead. Oh, yes, and um, I support the project. I, I think it's important for um, providing housing to the area. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I have no additional raised hands, thank you. Okay, so let me just um, give the uh, applicant a couple of minutes for rebuttal um, before we move to a vote. Can I, can I possibly do a screen share? No, uh, okay. we don't have the, the technical ability to do that. Will you right. just walk us through, talk us through what you're Yes, I, um, I, I strongly disagree that the project is oversized for the neighborhood. I put a lot of thought and effort into making the massing and the scale fit very well into the neighborhood. Um, we are respecting the front modal setback. We are respecting the side setbacks of 10 and 7. We're respecting the, the rear setback of 20 feet. These two building blocks resemble two three-family structures, and they step along the street block in the same pattern that the other buildings do. Um, I'm glad to hear that people like 34 and 36 Rossmore Road, but those are both buildings that have two bedroom units in them. And taking the stair out and combining it with um, sharing it among the six units enables each unit to have an additional bedroom. The three bedroom units were requested by the neighborhood. We started this project with a- um, so, so let me just ask you, um, I, I have a feeling that your project is still doable if you leave 97 out of the equation and somehow try to have 
um, the whole project work on 99 because there is some merit to the fact that at 97, uh, the backyard is totally being lost to a driveway to support 99. Well, um, I can address that somewhat in that the we are not actually um, short on usable open state space for 99. We're going to have an 11 foot setback to the fence and then the driveway on the other side. So we are in, ex in excess of the usable open space for 97. The plans examiner sent me a letter to that effect yesterday. He removed that violation, but it just didn't catch up with the hearing today. Um, so we have a, enough usable open space on the, that lot. Now there's, there's a lot of precedent set on Stedman Street as you go up. The okay, street. you know, so, so, um... We actually uh, take each case on its merit. So um, I think we've given everybody enough opportunity to speak on this case. May I have a motion? Well, I'm gonna make a motion to deny without prejudice. I think the, uh, the project needs to be uh, somewhat reconceived. Is there a second? I will second that motion, second. Secretary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm going to oppose. That's I'm going to oppose. So that's two oppositions. Uh, motion carries, uh, so it's denied without prejudice. Sorry, Joe, was that you that was an opposition? Yep. yep. Thank you. Okay, so motion carries, it's been denied without prejudice. Following the next case. Calling DOA 112 0246-655 Morton Street. This is a renovation of basement into an apartment and change of architecture to a boarding house. The violations Article 60, Section 60-9, the lot area for additional unit is insufficient. Article 60, Section 8, the dwelling unit is forbidden in the basement. Article 60, Section 8, the lodging house use is forbidden use. Article 60, Section 9, the floor area ratio is excessive. Article 60, Section 9, the usable open space is insufficient. Article 60, Section 37, our street parking is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Alfonso Sierra. I'm the architect for the client, and we're looking to uh, get a change of use to a lodging house and provide uh, additional unit in the basement. Um, right now, the the building is um, the client rents the rooms. Uh, there's four rooms per floor, uh, two means of egress, and um, the client is looking to provide a building that it's completely up to code. With now, uh, spring now why, why did we defer this case? Because I know that there were we were very concerned about the residential use in the basement. I, as I recall, about as yes, were yes. concerned about about that use. Um, you were deferred. Uh, what has happened in the time um, since we last saw this proposal? It, it was deferred because uh, a one of the abutters came on on before the meeting was over, the last meeting, and she stated that she was not aware of a community meeting. So you asked for us to do another meeting, which we held uh, already with the community. Uh, Ma Madam Chair, it was also deferred because the plans were very deficient. And so how are the new plans? Are they Some, still deficient? It, it's the somewhat, same plan. Somewhat, somewhat deficient. We still, the issue of the basement, we still don't have any elevations. We have no idea. Well, I mean, I, I do state the elevation is in there. Excuse Excuse me, it, the, there are no, you, what the plans that were submitted do not show any elevation, so we don't know what the height of the uh, floor to ceiling is and what it is in relation to grade. That was a problem last time that has not been corrected. I, so well, nobody I, asked me to do that, but I, if you look at I, the plan I, right I, now, it is seven I, feet. It's hold standard. on, Mr. Sarah, can you, um, Ms. Ambassador, um, mute Mr. Sarah for a minute? Um, so, I'm 
have to make put on the record that we are very concerned that with lodging houses that everybody is safe and secure. Um, and if we cannot have the information that we need to know that their health, safety, and welfare can be accommodated in this and that we cannot make a decision after being given a chance, I just need a motion, please, Mr. Ehrlich. Yes, I'm going to make a motion. By the, by the way, I will say the, 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 uh, Mr. Sarah is wrong. Seven feet is, it, first of all, it has to show it, and secondly, it's not adequate. This is not a single family home, so it has to be seven foot six. But I'm not saying that hold the on. seven feet are showing on there. Mr. Sarah, this regardless, is this is the second, second bite of the apple with inadequate information. I'm going to make a motion to deny. I'm going to second that motion to deny. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All in the next two cases. Calling BOA 1038331, 151 Spencer Street. There's a companion case, BOA 1038330, 25 New England Avenue. This is for 151 Spencer Street, construct a new four-story multifamily residential building consisting of 19 affordable rental housing units. This will be a joint venture between Codman Square, NDC Corporation, and T Lead Development to create two multifamily residential buildings. The violation is Article 65, Section 41. Our street parking is insufficient. Article 65, sec Section 41, our street loading is insufficient. Article 65, Section 8, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 65, Section 8, accessory parking is forbidden. Article 65, Section 9, the Florida ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the building height number of stories is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, the front yard is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. This is for 25 New England Avenue. This is to combine existing parcels, which include demolition of 5, 9, 21, and 23 New England Avenue, construct a new four-story multifamily residential dwell dwelling. This new structure will include 23 affordable rental units. Uh, violations Article 60, Section 40, off street parking is insufficient. Article 60, Section 40, off street loading is insufficient. Article 60, Section 19, a multifamily dwelling is forbidden. Article 60, Section 19, accessory parking is forbidden. Article 60, Section 20, the building height is excessive. Article 60, Section 20, the rear yard is insufficient. And Article 60, Section 20, the Floyd A ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, appearing for the appellant, my name is Matt Lawler. My address is 1 Boston Place, Boston 02108. I'm joined this afternoon by Dominica Mann, who is the Director of Real Estate and Asset Management for Codman Square. Neighborhood Development Corporation, and by Damian Bolden with Studio Luz, who are the project architects. Um, these combined matters uh, relate to the second phase of Codman Square's Talbot Commons development. Uh, the second phase consists of a total of 42 new multifamily residential units. 100% of the units will be affordable to households, making up to 60% of area median income. 19 new units are proposed for 151 Spencer with eight off street parking spaces and 23 new units are proposed for 25 New England with 12 off-street parking, off parking spaces. Unit sizes for both locations range from one to three bedroom units. The initial appeals for these combined matters were filed in January of last year. Um, subsequent to those initial appeals- oh, hold on, oh, hold on. So, um, let's, so how many spaces at 151, Spencer? 151 is eight spaces. Okay. And um, 12 at New England Ave. Correct. Um, and tell us how, is, is this, are these projects working in conjunction? In other words, is there shared driveway? How, tell us, tell us how these work together, if they do, because they might not. They, they, they are separate, so they're, they're not contiguous, they're, they're not next to each other, they're actually across Talbot Avenue from each other. Okay. And tell us then again about, um, 151 Spencer, tell us about why the parking number is so low for 19 for 19 units. Um, I, I will let, um, in particular with, with respect to the parking, I'll let um, Dominica or uh, Damien sort of speak to the thinking on the parking. 
Um, I have not been involved in the entire community process and design process so far, so I'm not entirely familiar with the specific decisions on parking counts. Not sure if they're. I'm sorry, what's the name? Dominic? Dominic, oh, okay. Dominic and Leanne. Yeah, okay. you've been unmuted. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, the parking, um, the parking ratio, because the 151 Spencer Street project is actually a collaboration, a joint venture with Travis Lee's development of the site that is. Um, the city owned lot of what formerly as known as the Roper's Gray Garage. And this development, we have decided to subdivide um, the lot. And with the 19 residential units, 100% affordable residential units, we have decided to um, get the ratio of less than 5%, um, therefore resulting in only just fitting eight parking spaces for the development at 151 Spencer. And tell us about the breakdown on the units at 151, how many one, twos, and threes, and maybe fours, and um, the average square footage of those units? Sure, so um, I'll, oh yeah, Damien, do you wanna take that? Yes, I'll take that. Uh, for the record, my name is Damien Bolden. Um, I'm the project manager at Studio Luz at Business address 67 Poplar Street, located in Roslindale. Uh, in terms of the approximate square footage, the one bedroom units are approximately 645 square feet. The two bedroom units are approximately 775 square feet on average. And the three bedroom units are approximately 1,055 square feet on average. Uh, and there are no four bedroom units. And in how many terms, one, twos, and threes? Yes, there are seven one bedroom units eight two-bedroom units and four three-bedroom units and there are also two accessible units and one of which is a sensory accessible unit okay uh, is there a roof deck proposed on this building no, no there's no roof deck no okay um okay um and tell us how the parking is proposed to work Dominica, do you... Can you repeat the question? Tell us how the parking is supposed to work. We have a shared driveway with um, Travis Lee's development on 270 Talbert. Um, and our, our parking, there is, I believe, a seven regular parking spaces with one handicap. That's on the west, actually, the southern border of the building. Um, Mr. Oleg, does that look like front yard parking to you, or is it screened off in some way? How, how, I'm, I'm still having a hard time understanding how this is going to work. Yeah, I, I'm looking, for, I can't quite tell either. I understand your confusion. Can, can we uh, go to the site plan, please? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so those those eight parking spaces are located just uh, at the rear of the building or at the south side of the building. Uh, you, oops, sorry, the screen is moving. Uh, and what was your question again? Um, okay, we were just trying screen. to figure out how the access to the lot is occurring, so you're sharing a driveway with your abutter, is that what it is? Correct. Correct. Okay. Is, is there a documented easement on that? So there's, my, my, my understanding is that there will be, that the lots are currently still joined, and so there will be a subdivision and there will be an access easement provided. Okay. Um, and, and tell us, talk to us now about New England Ave, the bedrooms. The bedroom count is 20. Three, what's the breakdown? Yes, um, at New England, uh, the, of the 23 units, six of them are one bedroom, uh, 12 or two bedroom and five or three bedroom units. Uh, again, no four bedroom units. The one bedroom units are approximately 615 square feet. The two bedroom units are approximately 775 square feet. 
and the three bedroom units are approximately 1,060 square feet. Okay, and tell us again how the parking is proposed to work on this site. Are you able to scroll to the, the 25 New England on the, yeah, I think you can go down. This, this is a separate, this is a separate lot, so this one is not shared with any other. I think it's it's, it should be a, a separate set of drawings. Yeah, it's pretty good to add. I think it's A1-00 on New England. It's, it, um, uh, Ms. Edwards, um, you might need to open a new, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Great, so scroll down, yep. yep. Actually, the site plan is just before the first floor plan. Yes, yeah, so go, sorry, go back up, yes. Yeah, one dash zero zero. Keep going, one, one more. There. Yep. Okay. There we go. So the, the parking would feed directly off of New England Ave, uh, where you'd have the, the 12 parking spaces, uh, one of which would be uh, handicap accessible. And the parking begins to serve almost as a buffer to the industrial building that's to the right. OK. Um, and no roof decks. Are there any yeah. common spaces in, in either or in both of these buildings? There's a shared lounge space uh, mm -hmm. on the ground floor, a shared lounge and laundry, okay. as well as, uh, you know, you've got the, the bike storage stations that are typically right by the entry in both buildings, and then shared exterior spaces for both. And no, no occupancy in the basement? No, okay. there, there's no basement. Okay. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? My drawings are good. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good evening, Madam. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Dante Peoples from the Mayor's Office. Sorry. Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And we would like to go on record in support of this um, proposal. Um, the applicant will bring the creation of affordable housing to the community. Thank you. Did pretty good for your first time up, Mr. Peoples. Here you go. Okay, go ahead. Who's sorry, next? Okay. Good job. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dustin Gardner on behalf of City Council Andrea Campbell's office. We would also like to go on record in support. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at Large, Michael Flaherty. Council to go on record in support. Madam Chair, Secretary here. We have numerous letters of support. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands. Excellent. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPDA design review. Please add uh, subject to recording of uh, appropriate easement and subdivision plans. Yes, yes on, on 151 Spencer. Yes. I'll, I'll second that with the uh, provisos uh, added. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank All you very much. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1082341, 8 Ready Avenue. This is a change of arcs from a two family to a three family, interior renovations of an existing basement and conversion into a two bedroom apartment with living, dining, kitchen, and bathroom. Two new remote egress doors provided with egress windows at each bedroom. The violation of Article 69, Section 29, Off Street Parking is insufficient. Article 69, Section 8, the use is forbidden. Article 69, Section 8, the basement units are not allowed. Article 69, Section 9, additional lot area is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the Floyd A ratio is excessive. Article 69, Section 9, usable open space is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, front yard is insufficient. Article 69, Section 9, the side yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Is the applicant here for Ready Ave? Wait one second, let me not see him in the attendee. Should be Paul 
Clinton. Hi, Paul, are you here? Can we skip to um, Dustin Street, please? You can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> Thank you. Calling the next case, calling BOA 1065297, 16 Dustin Street. This is the build out the basement according to submitted floor plan. The violation of Article 51, Section 9, the fluid air ratio is excessive. Statement address for the record, please. Um, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, my name is Alex Norman. I'm an applicant, 16 Dustin Street. So tell us uh, what you're proposing to do and tell us why you were deferred the last time. Uh, actually, I didn't understand why it was deferred the last time because uh, somebody from the board was not presented, as I understood. Okay, so what I need you to do is... Mad talk Madam Chair, to I can clarify. We only had two votes. We would not have been able to... Um, the architect had to step away from the project. That's why we present it to the full board. Okay, so we did not have a full board. So Correct. let's go ahead, uh, Mr. Norman. Um, tell us what you're proposing to do. Is this a one or a two family dwelling? It's a one family owner occupied dwelling. And okay. our intention is to convert part of the basement to the gym area. So you're gonna put part of the basement to gym. Is there any bedrooms proposed down there? No. What is the floor to ceiling height in that space? Uh, we have two different uh, areas. The old part of the basement, it's seven feet and one inch height. And the new area where the gym is proposed to be, it, it's eight feet and seven inches. Eight feet, seven inches? Correct. Okay. And so the plan that we are looking at um so the where as so i see storage i see garage i see mechanical um miss edwards can you zoom in a little bit so we can see exactly where that proposed gym is oh i see next to the storage facility so this is a single family dwelling it looks like there's a bar is there a kitchen down there no 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 so it's a bar sound it's so it's a rec <laughs> rec space. How are the plans, Mr. Ehrlich? Well, this is a really uh, de minimis uh, proposal. If he has seven foot one in the low area and eight, seven higher, uh, he's fine. I mean, there's okay. no... It's, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Uh, any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Let go record support of this proposal, um, you know, because it qualified for subcommittee at the time. We did not hold an abutters meeting, but we had them circulate flyers to the neighborhood and, and didn't hear any serious concerns. Um, they did go to the, Al the Alston Brighton Civic Association and were, were opposed by the Civic Association, but our office will go and support. There's just really one variance, FAR. Um, we don't think that'll really be a detriment to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, Secretary, we have a couple of letters of support. And Madam Chair, I'll go ahead. No, I was going to say, Annabella is on, I believe, to, to comment. Annabella, I'm going to mute yourself. Ma yeah, Madam Chair, members of the board, Annabella Gomes. Um, though the request is very simple, um, we, we have some concerns. A, first with the request that there is two means of egress. Uh, there is a bathroom that they're adding. Um, and they have a bar area that could easily be uh, converted to a kitchen. But that really isn't the concern that we have. The concern is the trust issue. Uh, they had come to the BIA some time ago to put dormers on their old house, and we supported them. Uh, we want to keep people in the neighborhood. And then we got calls over the weekend. The house had disappeared. Um, they said the house collapsed, but the house was demolished 
they had a crew that removed everything and then they had to build a new house which is what we're looking at right now so we do have trust trust issues uh, with with the proponent so we are opposed it thank you Madam Chair, I do have a raised hand by Olga. Um, Olga, um, may, may I just ask Annabella one more question? Annabella? Yes. Yeah. Was the house, after the collapse, was the house built according to plan or did it exceed it in any way? I really don't know uh, because they, I guess, had to build within the footprint of what the house was there, but I, ISD handled it. They didn't come back to us on the house. Um, the house now is very modern, which, you know, that's, it's their home, it's their style. Uh, it's very different from the house that was there. So uh, that everything had to go through ISD to replace the, the complete structure, but I, I've never heard of a house completely collapsing and for someone to have a crew that very weekend to remove everything immediately. I see. Okay. Um, any Anybody else? I'm sorry, Miss Ambassador, did you say there was somebody else ready to speak? Yep, there's a raised hand, but Moya, uh, Moira may have a, um, may want to speak. Did you have anything to add, Ms. McCrave? Okay, maybe not. Okay, and then I do have a hand raised by Olga. Olga, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Hi, uh, I'm a house uh, house owner. Um, so I just would like to clarify, uh, house was very old. Um, and when we uh, did reconstruction, of uh, the basement uh, was uh, not uh, sturdy. And um, we still have uh, old basement. and. Uh, house is very modern that's why okay. uh, hold on hold on please mr norman is is olga the property owner yeah yeah oh, it's my wife correct oh that is your oh, wife okay, okay. Sorry about that. thank you um uh, miss thomas can you just see if uh, miss mcrave uh, did want to get on the record sure yeah okay hey miss mcrave did you have anything to add I am muted her. I just don't hear anything. I'm sorry. Hello. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Mr. Norman, you have some explaining to do. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah. We, we when we hired the uh, when we started the digging for for the basement because uh, in the original plan was the. Um, uh, addition on the back side of the basement and it started to collapse uh, the basement so we had to partially build the new basement to fix the old one because it was some rocks uh, deeper in the ground that were not uh, connected to each other it's okay so it's it's very well I guess it's like 19th century or okay so hold on so um board members um please may i have a motion <coughs> can you tell i'm getting tired <laughs> well this is also an odd one i have to say yeah if, 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 if we're just dealing with what's in front of us the proposal to do the basement without the backstory it seems like it's a fairly easy uh, uh motion to approve um, the backstory certainly adds a uh, uh, little drama, but uh, I'm not sure that that should factor into our uh, decision. So I guess I'm going to make a motion to approve. And, and I want I want to make sure that it's on the record that this is intended to continue to be a one family because I kind I understand what Miss Gomes was heading to. Uh, with the um, with the egress, the um, et cetera, et cetera. So we just need to put that on the record, if that's okay. That's fine. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Madam Chair, I'm going back to Ready Avenue. Uh, for the record, calling BOA 1082341, Ready Avenue. Are they on the phone call? Still don't see that. 
So it's now two o'clock. I'm going to make a motion for denial without prejudice before we go to the one o'clock. So I'm going to second. All, all those, uh, was there, there was a second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I'm going to call the next case to one o'clock. Calling DOA 107-1651, 6 Magdalia Street. This is a directly two-family dwelling with two off-street parking. The violations Article 65, Section 9, law area is insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, the Floyd A ratio is excessive. Article 65, Section 9, front yards insufficient. Article 65, Section 9, side yards insufficient. And Article 65, Section 9, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Attorney Patrick Mahoney with the business address of 160 Federal Street. Uh, representing the developer for six million uh, Just for the record, I'd like to go on. I'd like to recuse myself. Thank you. Go ahead, um, Mr. Mahoney. Uh, Madam Chair, the application before us is to erect a single family home. Um, and we are appealing two, two sections of zoning relief in Article 65, specifically uh, insufficient lot area, as well as excessive floor area ratio. The um, just as an outset of the proposal, there is a one-car parking requirement. There's an additional um, parking space being added to the rear. The it is a oh, hold on, Mr. Moni. Let, let let me just make sure I get this right. So this is to erect a single-family building with one surface parking spot. Is that what I'm understanding? The, this drawing is perfect to show. It's, it's two surface one full-size sur surface parking spaces and one compact space, although one space is required. Okay, um, so your only violations are your lot area is insufficient, which there's nothing you can do about, and your FAR is excessive. What is, what is the- Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I just need clarification because I read into the record as a two family and I'm looking at as of February 16, 2021, it says we are writing in opposition to the developer's application to construct a two-family house. If, I think is it, it a one family or is three, it a two-family? It moved uh, from a three to a two to a one, right? That's correct. It, it is okay. a one family and a recent plans were sent to ZBA and inspectional services at the end of March and were yeah, updated right. and stamped by ISD on uh, April 1st. So tell us what's what the zoning district is and what the FAR is and required and what are so, you proposing? Certainly, Madam Chair. So the uh, zoning subdistrict is a 3F5000. The minimum lot size requirement to erect a single family home is uh, 3,750 square feet. Our lot size is 3,416 square feet. Uh, thereby, we're seeking a variance for a approximately 339 square feet. Uh, additionally, the floor area ratio here is 0 0.5, which would be 1,708 square feet would be the allow allowed floor area ratio. And we are proposing 1,810 square feet, which is an FAR of 5.3. The- 0.53. Uh, yeah, I apologize. Yes, yeah, 0.5. Got it. Okay, how are the plans, um, Mr. Ehrlich? Any basement dwelling space or not? No, it's uh, they're pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, the the uh, the parking that Mr. Mahoney described, I don't, you know, the 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 car in the rear wouldn't be able to get out past the compact. But it, from a variance point of view, it's irrelevant because all he needs is one. Okay, and this is a three-bedroom dwelling, um, Mr. Uh, it is a three bed, two and a half bath. Okay. Any questions from the board? Is anybody here to speak in support of this proposal? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Patrick Scandell, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This has gone through a thorough community process um, that began with the initially a proposed three unit dwelling. Um, and there has been four butters meetings for this proposal as well as outreach to the lower mill civic association and ashmont adams civic association we'd like to go on record in support of this one unit um, proposal that responds to many of the neighborhood concerns i would like to note that while lower mills and ashmont adams is on record in support as well as some of butters there are some outstanding concerns from direct butters thank you 
And what are those outstanding concerns, uh, Mr. Fendel? Uh, I think just the density of uh, any development of the property. Um, but they, they have responded to the to the most of the concerns. Got it. Okay, go ahead. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan for City Council at large, Michael Flaherty, the council to go and record support. Hey, Madam Chair, we do have two raised hands. Um, Caitlin, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Okay, uh, Julie, Julie Ryan, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address? Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Julie Ryan from City Council Frank Baker's office and would like to go on record and support. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Karen Foley, Boston City Council and East Wasabi George's office would like to go on record and support. Thank you. All right, and um, Joseph? Um, you've been unmuted. Can you state your name and address, please? Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman, members of the board. My name is Joe Sussmeyer. I live at 23 Van Winkle Street, and I'm a direct abutter to this lot that is open space, and I am opposed to building on the lot. Thank you. Okay, so given the information that this is a privately owned lot, and this is a proposal for a single family dwelling, May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve BPA design review. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The last order of the day. The last order of the day is the open meeting law complaint. Case BLA 113 and BLA 113 at 42 Irving Street, the discussion of the open meeting law complaint of April 13, 2021, alleging violation of the open meeting law during the hearing of the above appeals at the April 6, 2021 hearing of the Board of Appeals. So uh, I'd like to just kick off to, um, to just kind of uh, make sure that when the staff does respond to this open meeting complaint that we do understand that the um, the ambassador gives uh, everybody has a, an opportunity to um, have a trial run is there is that true yes madam chair um, that's been our practice since we established our virtual hearing process um, our hearings uh, initially, when we resumed, we were starting at 10 a.m., um, and then we transitioned back to 9.30, but we had been holding a, an hour-long session prior to uh, commencing the hearing at the, at the start time so that um, those that wish to participate can log in and test their, their function on their device. Uh, you know, I, I would also say that, you know, you um, at the opening of the hearing um, and at multiple times throughout each hearing restate the instructions for participating via WebEx, whether you're connected by computer or a telephone. Uh, and those those instructions are also additionally uh, posted on slides, the display slides um, when we call when you ask for, for comments. So those instructions are are visible and repeated throughout the hearing. Uh, and for and for April 6, for the hearing of April 6, um, the uh, the the um, petitioners who, who 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 brought this complaint did should they have been interested in did in fact have the opportunity to do a trial run. So I don't know whether or not they uh, attempted that, but certainly the opportunity would have been there as, as in keeping with our practice, that hour long session with the ZBA ambassador was held on April 6th. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, um, 
So it sounds, and then um, we should also check the files to ensure that, you know, to ensure that the petitioner uh, did in fact um, submit anything in writing. Yes, so yes that, fine, Madam Chair, I, I have reviewed the file and the complaint and uh, the complainant uh, who filed the open meeting law complaint did submit uh, via the testimony form that is uh, available through the a link in the hearing agenda did submit the comments uh, that he wished to make uh, in opposition to the uh, appeal for 42 Irving Street. And uh, those comments were received by the board prior to the hearing and were, in the, were a, a part of the file at that time. Excellent. Okay. So I think these are relevant. These are relevant points to have in the response to the complaint. Uh, is there is there anything else any other opportunity uh, because I do think we um, this this kind of covers all all possibilities for communication with the board yes I, I think you know we've um, again we've implemented you know took to great lengths to carefully implement a lot of these procedures to ensure that our virtual hearing process could be as close to the process that we have in person yeah. uh, there, unfortunately there along the way there have been some difficulties on our end and on on the other end uh, from community users and so I we are always trying to be on the lookout and accommodate as best we can all comments um, but it, again in, in reviewing this particular complaint um, it would be my opinion that the board did not violate the open meeting law and if the board so desires i will be happy to prepare a formal response uh, and file that with the complaining as well as the attorney general's office um may i have a motion to um authorize um that letter uh in response i'd like to make a motion to authorize our um kevin to compile a letter in response to the open meeting complaint that um, identifies all the talking points that we've discussed here today. Sarah, second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. May I have the board stay on for about three minutes after this hearing? Um, so um, the meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>